What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Jets Afterburners podcast. I'm being joined by a very special guest, the greatest special teams coach in NFL history, and I mean it, Mr. Mike Westoff. Coach, how you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Some uh, great pictures that you have there in your, your introduction. They uh, took me back. I was obviously part of quite a few of them. Um, yeah. It was pretty cool. I, I got a kick out of it. I, I really, you, you captured it very well. Thank you. I got to give uh, some of the uh, credit to my co-host Dan, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. But uh, okay, it that's was good, definitely all of him. Thank you. Appreciate that, Coach. So we have a lot to get into. The first, well, I've spoken to you. You've been on the show before, and last time we had you on, you were officially retired, <laughs> and then obviously this <laughs> for the third time, huh? For the third time, <laughs> and I keep unfortunately. Going Unfortunately, you came back to the NFL, but not for the New York Jets. I, was, I definitely would have loved to have you. It's it's different. It was it's not that it's not that I just was looking to come out of retirement because I absolutely was not. I enjoyed okay. what I was doing, and I was doing the shows at ESPN. We had the uh, the television show at SMY, which you know, Ray Lucas yep. and I, I I very much enjoyed all of that. Um, Anita Marks, the morning show that we did on ESPN. And, and that was a, a lot of fun for me. And then, uh, you know, I, I got a phone call at one time in 2017 from Sean Payton, and who I never met. I did not know. I knew who he was, of course, because, you know, he had done a great job as a coach. And he said that, um, that they were really good, but their special teams were really struggling. And he talked me into joining them. I, I did not want to do it, to tell you the truth. I really didn't, but I did. And, and I, I enjoyed it. It was a great experience. We were good. We were a very good team. You know, Drew Brees is a great quarterback. Sean's a very good coach. We had a good football team. And we, we went very far in the championship game. And you know, so I, I went the next those two years. Then I re-retired. And then he told me, he said, you know, if I, if I ever get out of this, I'll go back. And when I come back, I'd like you to come with me to help me get started. And that's how we left it back in 2018 and I went to see games I traveled you know I always I always come to New York to see the Jets right. play and I would occasionally I would go over to Miami um, and then I, w I went to New Orleans a number of times and then you know he was out for a year and he called me mm -hmm. uh, actually a couple of times and he said look I, I'm thinking of coming back he said I, I'm very interested in the Denver he said because of the ownership there you know they just, he just he was impressed with them they they were very sincere and so a year ago, I actually, I was in Wyoming when this took place. I, I, go, I went to school out there, and I, I go out there a lot to Jackson Hole. I own uh, four snowmobiles and a trailer and a truck and everything else. And so I nice. like to do that, and I spend some time in the winter out there. And I left from Jackson and, and went, to, went to Denver and talked with them. And I agreed to come back with them for a year to help them. And, uh, and we got started. I went back and did it. I did it all last year. It was not something that's my favorite, you know, when you just all of a sudden you're at my age, you know, I was 75 years old and here I'm back working that crazy schedule, but I enjoyed it. I, I did. I got back into it. Um, we're trying to put a team back together. It's never an easy task, but, uh, you know, we started off actually kind of poorly, lost a yeah. couple games that we really could have very, very much, I believe we could have won. But then we got a little bit hot and we played some very good football. I mean, not perfect by any means, but pretty doggone good. And we played Kansas City in a great game at their place. And then we turn around and beat them at our place, beat them pretty good. Went up to Buffalo and beat them. We beat Chicago at Chicago. We beat Green Bay. 
we played some good, solid football. And then we, we lost a couple games that uh, I, I wish we could have won, but we didn't. And finished up, you know, just a little bit below where, where we'd have really liked to have been. And then I, I was packed up and going home. And they, and they said they wanted to talk to me. So they pulled me in and we talked about some things in a way to, for me to, to come back. And, uh, and that's probably what I'll do. I, I, I'm going to go back out there in a couple of weeks and, okay. um, and, and be a little bit of a part of it to, to do some things to, to see what's going on. And, uh, but they asked me to come back and, uh, in a different, it's different kind of circumstances. You know, I don't, I'm sure the rest of the NFL coaches would have a fit, you know, thinking what I do, you know, especially my guys, you know, here's Mike going to come back and coach half a year, but I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks. Um, I like doing it and I'm pretty good at it. I can still do it. And so I, I like Sean Payton. I like him. I like working for him. I, I I'm assistant head coach and, um, he knows how to, he, he knows what to do. He knows how to build a football team and it's going to take a little time. You know, we're, we're trying to piece it together. Um, but he's working at it. And so, um, so I did, I helped him out and, and I won't do it forever. I can't, I keep saying that, but I know I won't do it forever, but, um, I, I, I enjoyed that and we'll, we'll see what happens. Right. Is this going to just be like a year to year basis? It's always a year to year basis with me. <laughs> it's you get to my age, uh, all the years that I've done this. Yes. It's year to year. I, I would right. never uh, agree to any more than that or no, or, or they ask me, you know, it's just something mm -hmm. that we talked about and they, they said, look, you, you, you did very well. You know, for most of the year we led the league in, um, I think if you look at the rankings, let's see punt coverage, I believe we were second kick coverage. We were sixth or seven or eight, somewhere in there. Um, punt return. We led the NFL and kick return. We led the league almost the very end until we fumbled one against the Patriots, which is the best blocked one we had all year. And we ended up eighth or something. But if you add those things together, we led the NFL in those categories. We we're first though. So, you know, I like that. I, I was, right. I was, we, we, we finished the year punting. Well, we did not start punting very well. And that, that'll, that, that, that's going to improve that that'll some, somehow it's going to improve. And so, you know, there were a lot of good things that, that I, I enjoyed and I've got a good group of kids, good group of guys. Um, right. And the guys that work with me, Ben caught weekend. It was with me for a long time with the jets. And, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a good group. Chris Banjo came with us mm -hmm. as a coach and he played for me at new Orleans. So I kind of have my guys, you know, I have my, I have some of my guys with me and I like that. I like it. And I like some of the players. So, you know, to come back and maybe give it another try, I'm, I'm leaning much more toward than I would be against because I like that. I like those guys. And I, and I, it took them a while to get to like me, you know, it takes like 10 years before they get to like me because <laughs> I'm a little tough on them, but I, I think it's a pretty good group. And, and, and I, and, and, and I, I, if I can help, then I think that's, that's what I'm leaning toward. And as I said, I, I, I like the way Sean Payton puts a team together. I, he does it in a first class manner. There's no, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't take any shortcuts. He really tries to do it right. Our football team has always tried to play very hard, but good, clean, hard football. I think he's, I think he exemplifies that very well as a coach. You know, I mean, you look at the Saints teams, what they did. And of course, they had a pretty good guy running the show with Drew Brees, but, uh, but he's done a very good job. And I, and I enjoyed my time with him when I was there. And I have, uh, it's not, this year was a little bit tough, but there were a lot of good things. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm hundred percent sure of this in the national football league, both the trip up and the trip down can be very rapid, can be very rapid. It doesn't take much. You can, you can, you can get things going in the right direction uh, and you can also lose it. And so it's, uh, I've had great experience in the league. I'm very proud of it. Let's see my last game we played out at, uh, in Las Vegas was my 677th. Oh, so wow. that's, a, that's a lot of NFL games. I'm proud of that. Yeah. I like Congratulations. it. And, well, thanks. Yeah. It's been, it's, it's been a good ride and I very, very much have enjoyed it. In fact, you know, as you, you know, we talked about it before I wrote a book about it. And uh, yep. you can still buy it, actually. <laughs> I'll get back. I, I, 
I kind of stepped away from it a little bit, tell you the truth, because I got back to mm-hmm. coaching full time. But I'll get right. back. I'll get back with it. I've talked to quite a few people about Oh, there's a couple of people have called me about making a documentary with it. Uh, one guy even I've had a couple film companies talk about making a movie out of it. So I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm proud of it. And uh, it, it's a good story about good people in the greatest business there is. And, you know, you always have the jet fan support as I, long as you know how much all I the enjoyed, other teams do. I enjoyed I enjoyed my time at New York. It, I've, right. I've yeah, told you that before. I, I, I mm-hmm. very much liked it there. I, I liked what we did. We were a good football team. Yeah. I hate to remind them they haven't been in the playoffs since I left. I hate to tell them that, but I'm going to tell them. <laughs> so too bad. We were there. We ran them a lot when I was there. We were good. And yeah. we went to championship games. Uh, we did a lot of things well. We, uh, we, I had a lot of fun. I, 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 I love the people. I like living there. I like the city. Um, it was, a, it was a very, very good experience for me. And, uh, and I, and I was happy to retire, you know, as, as a, as a member of the New York Jets. And so they've always been a, a special place for me. I've always felt, you know, except when I'm trying to play them and they, they beat me and you know, I want to try anything I could to win, but, uh, yeah. I, I had, I had a good relationship there and, and, and I will always enjoy and relish very much my time. Yeah, of course. And they, they're definitely like a team that's on the rise. Uh, beating Denver last year, obviously there was like some bad blood with that and everything. Not going to go uh, crazy into that, you nah, know. It is what I it is. I don't pay any attention to it. I, I really don't. It, uh, you know, football, it's a tough sport. Everybody plays right. hard. No, nobody gets along. You know, when, when, I'm, when I'm going against somebody, I don't like anybody. I respect everyone. Everyone. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, I, and I certainly feel that way. Of course, you know, I know some of those guys. I mean, Tom Morse did. You know, you're, yep. you're a punter who I think is maybe the best in the league. I, I, I love him. He was a great punter for me, and I have tremendous respect for him. And uh, though you know, there was a lot, a lot of good things, and uh, but we'll see because they're, you know, they're they're in a mode that a lot of change is going on there, and we'll see how it yep. works for for you guys. Definitely. And before we get more into the Jets, I just wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on the new kickoff rule? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have very much mixed emotions. Because of course I kind of was a, a a little bit of a proponent of of what we did. I mean I think I have the most touchdowns I, I think in, in NFL history as a coach. I'm pretty damn close. Um, mm-hmm. I had all those guys that led the league. I mean we had an army of guys. You know that the whole oh, Chad Morton way back when mm-hmm. and Justin Miller, and Brad Smith and uh, you know um, uh, uh, Joe McKnight. You know they they were they all yeah. led the league. All those guys led the league. Santana Moss. Come on, we led the league. We were really good. And I love that oh, yeah. part of it. I love the creativity. I, I like the excitement of the play. Now, I know that a lot of the, the play got legislated. And mm-hmm. some of it rightfully so, you know, because of collisions and, you know, the running, the long distance that you run and the collisions involved and, you know, trying to make the game a little bit more safe. And, um, and this is a little bit of a hybrid. I, there's a lot of moving parts. I see, I, I, I think I'm going to like it better, a lot better than the, what just took place. And that was basically a non-play. The, the moving the touchback, the moving the kickoff up, it became a non-play. I think, what was it, 80, 82 or so percent last year were touchbacks. That didn't even yeah. count the fair catches. It's just a non-play. Now, you know, that's, that, that, that's, that's not exactly what everybody wants you want, I mean, I want the play. Yes, I want it to be a safe play. But I, I, love, I love drawing a play and calling a play and teaching a play. I, I love it. it. It just is so important to me. And so this is a little bit of a hybrid because what you're doing in essence, because you're kicking off from the same spot, you've got a landing area. If the ball goes into the end zone, like on a fly or drives in um, without hitting the landing area, um, you know, it goes out to the 30 and that's punitive, you know, that, that that's punitive for the kicking team. So you're, you're going to have more plays. I believe, I, I think you're going to see about a hundred. I'm going to take it a little higher. I think each team is going to get about 120 more special teams player plays than they had last year. Each team. Now I'm talking coverages oh, I mean. and returns. I believe it's going to be pretty close to that. That's my guess. If you All add right. up the number of plays you had last year, 
you know, with touchback, I'm not counting. A touch I could I could run down on the touchback, please. You know, I think you're I think you're going to see that number. I'm going to guess 120. Uh, okay. Each team will add that about that many to their repertoire. So now we're going to get you know some guys are going to get to play. They have to you know it's not just run down on a, on a nothing. You know we're going to have a play. It's in a lot of ways it's kind of turning the big collision play into kind of an offensive type play, line of scrimmage play, because the the offense and the defense are in a very close proximity. So there'll be a lot of guys all together, and then and I think you're going to see. You know, there's some interesting parts to it because you've got the officiating. Uh, right, right. The kicking team can't start until the ball's touched or touches the ground. Okay, the return team really can't go then uh, um, a- a- until the kicking team uh, goes. You know, they're looking at. I, I think that I think I'm gonna do that a little bit differently. I'm gonna coach that a little different, but I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not giving Ooh. them any of my secrets. Um, no, I don't blame you. They they can't. So there's moving parts. They all have to be officiated properly. You're going to have a lot of guys in one area very quickly. Now, what's that going to mean? Uh, I, for when I first think about it, I think that that's going to mean uh, an increase in holding penalties. So it's going to be up to us to teach it so that you're not holding. Because you're going to have this all of a sudden, you know, you've got 10 here and 10, and 10 here. You know, they're all kind of right together quickly. And that's going to make it interesting. So I think that's... That, that that's going to be something we'll have to see. I loved what we had. Um, you know, I saw that some of the dangers in it. Yes, I, I, I saw some of that. Uh, like someone very highly up in the NFL office reminded me they quit complaining because half of it, I, they did it because of me. So I kind of took that as a compliment. So you say whatever you want. Yeah. I like it. I like the way we played. Very, very physical, very clean. Um, but I loved it. I, I just loved it. And so... I'm going to approach this with a vigor that this is a play okay. and my goal is going to be, and I've already done a great deal of thinking and talking about it already, how to make it a weapon. How, how do we do that? What's the best way to make it a coverage weapon, you know, to make it a, a return. How can we get a, re- you know, I've got a guy that led the league, you know, Marvin Mims, come on. He went to the pro bowl. I want to get now. You probably have to yeah. play too deep, but yeah. I've got two good ones. I've got another guy. Actually, I've got three that I think are pretty good. So, you know, I, I'm ready to, to try to get going and see what I can make happen out of it. But, you know, they want to play, but they don't want the big collision. So this, this is a little bit of a, uh, uh, of a hybrid. That's a little bit of a hybrid. And, and there's, and that, that's going to be some bumps and, and grinds in it. Um, and we'll see how it all works out, but it's, it's interesting. I'm always, you know, in my age, I guess, when I've gone back so long in the NFL, there's a little tiny bit of reluctance to make such a radical change, but yet it, it maybe is the only answer to the solution without having the collision, the big collision. That's kind of what it is. Now, I practice a type of coverage every single week where we line up and practice our coverage full speed, running about 20 yards. So in a lot of ways, this new rule is what I've been doing every single week that I've coached. So I, I kind of like that. Cause I'm like, oh, well, okay, I'm kind of doing this in a way, in a, in a way, you know, in a drill way. Because, uh, you know, in the NFL, in order to practice special teams, you have to learn how to shrink the field. I mean, how many, what do you think in the middle of the week and you're in the 15th week, you're going to run down and run 70 yards? I mean, how, th- how often do you think you can do that? You can't. <laughs> you know, you just wear them out. So you have to learn how to shrink the field. And this kind of is, some ways, is that very thing. So I know I gave you a very long answer to your question, All right. but hey. there's, there's some complexities to it. There really are some complexities. Yeah. I'm definitely excited to watch you scheme it up and check it out during the season. Um, one thing that we had spoke about last time that you were on was how much fun and how much you enjoyed hard knocks back yes. in two, uh, 2010. Did. did you watch it last year with the New York jets? Yeah, I did. I actually did. It, it happened to be uh, come on in Denver, you know, because of the time change at a perfect time. It was when we were in training camp. And it would be just about the time that I, you know, could leave the office and, you know, I was tired. It was in the evening and I could go back. Uh, I had a kind of a suite in a hotel that I lived in and, uh, and I could watch it. I, and, and I watched every episode. I enjoyed it. I thought they did a good job. Um, actually, I was, I was very impressed with a lot of, a lot of it. I liked the way, you know, I actually, I, I, I thought Aaron Rodgers did a, a good job in it uh, because sometimes he's, 
you know, he's irritated me. You know, sometimes I wish he'd shut up. Uh, <laughs> well, you want me to tell you? I can't tell. I'm just telling you what I think. But I was yeah. impressed in that. And don't get me wrong. I think he's a great football player. But I was impressed in that. I, I mean, I, maybe I saw, a, I kind of felt like I was seeing a side of him that I didn't know. I mean, I, don't, I really don't know him. Uh, and I didn't know. But I liked it. I thought, this is, this is impressive. He's doing a good job. He, he looks like, just my impression from the show, but he looks like the leader that I thought he should be. And that's kind yes. of what I saw. And so I don't know how, how much of it, you know, carried to when you weren't around, but um, that's kind of what I saw. But I liked doing, you know, when Steve Sable was alive when he did ours and he was such a gentleman, you know, his father created NFL films and uh, right. he did ours and he, he loved our show. I mean, he, he told me that he, th he told me he was never going to know another one that he personally, because that's the last one. He, now he didn't know he got sick and, and, and was not able to do it anyway, but um, he thought, he thought ours was perfect and he loved it. And I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked the way they did it. I mean, they filmed, yeah. you know, a thousand hours for an hour show. It was crazy. You know, the film crews were everywhere. You never really knew, unless they were interviewing you, like I never did, that, that, that I would be on the air. You know, I had a little battery pack that I kept in my pocket. It recorded every yep. single thing I said. You know, some good and bad for me sometimes. But, you know, I liked it. I liked the way they handled it. I thought they were very professional uh, they showed it and, and I enjoyed it. No one, he made it clear to us that if you try to get on the show, you'll never get on the show. You'll never get on. He said, just be yourself. Just do your job. However, however it is you do it, let us piece it together. And I, and so I, I, I thought that was, that, that was pretty worthwhile. So I've kind of become a little bit of a fan of the show. I've seen some that I like a lot more than others. And, uh, and I, I thought the New York Jets was was actually done very well, very well. Would you like to see the Denver Broncos on it next year? Yeah, that's a good question. That, that's a. I mean, I don't know. I I can see it always. Um, I I I'm I'm the I'm the guy I guess that would say yes, because okay. I I just like being honest about things and just go do it. Just and, and if someone watches it, you know, you're not trying to hide anything i don't know let, let people see I, I i think the fans in some ways deserve that uh no you know what are we going to show them the inside of exactly how we run every play i don't know some place how i i hope they don't find out some of the ways aren't too good sometimes um <laughs> so yeah i would say okay if we did it i'm okay if we don't do it i'm okay with that too uh but right. i would never hide it i i thought they were great they were i thought they were very very professional and handled it. Of course, you know, obviously the, you know, the leader of the pack did R, Steve Sable. I mean, come on, the guy's one of the, you know, top media guys in in history. You know, he and his father. Come on, they're the they're the guys, um, and they were tremendous. So if we were involved in it, sure, sure, sure. And no, I probably won't tone my language down any. I can't help it. You know, I don't, I don't swear like that all the time. You know, just who we are. I, who cares? It's what yeah. we do. Don't it's, ever, it's, don't ever not be you. If someone wants to, yeah, it just someone wants to, I have so much respect for this business and I feel so fortunate to have been in it as long as I have. I mean, I think the National Football League, I mean, it's, it's to me, it's, there's not a sport that's even close in my opinion. I mean, I love it. I mean, I just think the way it's done, the way it's handled, the way it's produced, the way that the games are exciting. You know, there's things that have changed that, yeah, they're a little difficult for someone like me to totally accept. Cause, you know, I sort of still like a little bit of the old fashioned smack them around. But uh, I, I think the National Football League is the best damn business going. It's just a tremendous, the sport's tremendous. You know, the way it's played, the way it's conducted, it's uh, it's exciting. To, you know, it's just every year you put a game on, you you just can't wait. And I, I still am a big fan. So for to having worked in it this long, I'm very, very proud of it and to have kind of helped mold a particular aspect of it i'm extremely proud of you know i mean i think i molded the whole damn thing but that's just me because i'm kind of cocky but i mean i love it I, I love the game and i have tremendous respect for the people in it so if we were involved in a anything like that i'd say sure if, if we didn't want to do it I, I respect that also now mr westhoff uh, i just like to introduce myself my name is dan <laughs> Hi, and man. sorry I'm, I'm late to the party that's all right. That's okay. Uh, 
We but speaking can, of, we, res- we don't find you that much. <laughs> speaking of respect, we have tremendous respect for you uh, and Thank everything you, that you brought to this game. And just looking at your resume, so many people just think that you're just a special teams coach. Special teams coach, you've done it all. Uh, we see here you're an offensive line coach, tight ends coach with the Indianapolis Colts from the '82 to '84, and then one of the longest tenured coaches when you were with Miami with the Dolphins from 86 to 2000 tight ends coach and special teams coach. What was it being around someone like Don Shula? It was the greatest. It was the great. And I coached defense when I was in college. So I yep. did a little bit of everything. I played, I played offensively and defensively. Um, to work with someone like Don Shula was such an honor. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, a, he, he was so knowledgeable so experienced. I mean, I, I referred to him, you know, I referred to him in my book that he wasn't the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. I mean, right. He was the head coach of the National Football League. I mean, there's nothing in that business that went on that he wasn't an active part of. And he was just a brilliant, brilliant person. And he and he had a tremendous respect for the game. You know, he always did things well. And he always handled, he respected the media. You know, you never heard anyone talking about Don Shula having a team that was cheating or a team that was cheap shotting. It, it didn't happen. He did it the right way. And to have to be part of with someone like him, uh, incredible, incredible experience. Difficult to start because he's tough. He's tough to work for at first. You know, it, it takes you a while. But then once he, you know, he, he, he got to be great with me and uh, I love my relationship with him. And we were good. You know, we, we, you know, of course, we had a quarterback that was a pretty good football player. And a guy named Marino, he was pretty good. <laughs> so it was fun. You know, we never, we ran into a buzzsaw with Buffalo. Buffalo was very, very good at that time. You know, and they went to the four straight Super Bowls and they kept knocking us out a little bit. They were a little bit more balanced team than we were. Uh, but it was a great run. And working with someone like Don Shula was, was an honor, very much an honor. Now, having the resume that you have, right, was there ever a point where you were offered a head coaching job? Because as a Jet fan, I just wished that when you had that opportunity after Herman Edwards, that they would have gave it to you. I mean, I tried. I tried to get it. There were two times that I thought that I was in a pretty good position. One was uh, after Jimmy Johnson left the Miami Dolphins. I was in a perfect position with that one. I think I should have gotten that job. The guy that got it, come on, he, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, <laughs> it's the reality. What am I going to tell you? Shoot me. Yep. Um, I, I believe, you know, I, I, I'd had great years. And I, Marino asked me, Dan, Dan wasn't ready to retire. And he asked me to, to, to enter, he, he, to, he asked Wayne Huizenga to, to talk to me. And, and I kind of put together a package of how I thought the Miami Dolphins should work. I was going to keep our coordinator, George Hill. We were number one ranked defense in the NFL. I had a great special teams unit. We were the best in that area. And um, and I had a guy who was going to take my place. And then I had a good friend that I knew that was coaching at the Indianapolis Colts. And I was going to try to get, he was going to come in and put in the uh, Peyton Manning offense for Dan Marino at the end of his career. I thought it was a pretty damn good plan. Because mm-hmm. you put Dan Marino in a shotgun, He'll throw it. Just give him the ball. Just snap the ball and hand it off or throw it. He, you know, because he couldn't move as well back then. Remember, he had the Achilles problem yep. and he had to wear the big boot. And But he, he had thrown for 5,000 yards. I don't know how you're going to stop the guy. We had the number one defense in the league, and I had an all-star team. So, you know, we could be pretty good. We, we were a good team. And I think I, I really felt that that was a time that – uh that I was very, very capable and very, and very worthy of getting the job and having, you know, some, a lot of times being a special teams coach is reactionary. You have to react to situations. You know, you're not, you're not the guy that's just planning it. You got to react. Oh, we got to punt. Uh Oh, okay. You know, we didn't get the first down. Oh, we got to, you got to punt. What are you going to do? And that's a lot. That's very similar to being what the head coach has to do. A lot of times he has to react to situations. And I think I'm pretty good at it. You know, I did it a lot, and I did it with guys. You know, Don was very, very well organized and taught me a lot how to prepare for those things. So I, I think I – and I worked with Jimmy Johnson. He was also very, very good at that. That part of the game was just very much a strength of his. And so I felt I, I, I could have done it. Then when I was – after Herman left, um, I thought I was also in a very good situation there. I, I could have done it at that time. You know, that, 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 
the New England Patriots got red hot, you know, and everybody fell in love with the Belichick. And, and of course, Eric Mangini was on that staff. And, you know, so we kind of, you know, we just, we were going to become the New England Patriots South Branch. And uh, it, it didn't work that well. Um, and, 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 and I thought Eric did actually some decent things. But anyway, those were two times when I felt that, uh, that, that, that I, I was very, very qualified in a good position and would have done a good job. My whole thing, just like I wrote my book, figure it out. I would have figured it out. I'm still figuring it out. Sure. You know, do I have all the answers? No, hell no. I, mean, I think I do, but I know that I don't. Um, I would have figured it out and I would have got guys to help me. And I was around some great coaches, you know, that, that really did things very, very well that I learned from, you know, I mean, I sat next to coach Shula for a long time. He and I were very close. And, um, and of course I was with Jimmy those years and, you know, he's a, He's a he's a good head coach. He he did a very good job in putting teams together. He understood that, uh, things like that. And so I, I believe that uh, that that I very much I very much could have done it. Yes. And you know I just want to just point something out. And I do apologize for the listeners. They hear an echo from my side and from Liam, not from Coach Westhoff. So we do apologize if you hear the echo. It, it, it kind of sounds like uh, like a broadcast from on the opposite side of the grave. So we do apologize that it's coming out that way. Uh, we do apologize. Sounds good to me. Yeah? We're we're picking it up well in Florida. Ah, uh, that's the place to be. That's where everybody's moving to. What do you want me to tell you? We're getting it well down here in Florida, so I can hear I can hear everything great. Well, you know, you kind of segued into something. Um, just one more, and I'm, it's all yours, Liam. Um, you know, you, you've been with the Jets from 2001 to 2012, and there were so many coaches there um, with Edwards and Mangini and, and Rex. What was one thing about each that kind of – brought you to a certain point where, okay, you know what? There can be some sustainability of winning because you had winning cultures with Herman Edward, yeah. Edwards and then Eric Mangini that first year. And then also with Rex, I mean, you can't forget, right? I mean, oh, nine in, in 2010, right. that was one of the best years of well, a Jets with, fan with, life. If you go back with it, you know, you start with Herman, you know, he walked into a good football team. I mean, don't forget, you know, that's Bill, Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick. Yes, sir. I mean, those guys know how to put a football team together. We we had a lot of good players. That's why I went there. I, I had several offers. Right. I, I I liked. I knew the team. The, these guys are good. You know, look look at our receivers: Wayne Corbett, Lavernius Coles, Santana Moss, Kevin Mawai. He's pretty good. Uh, Curtis Martin. He's pretty good football. You see what I'm getting at? Come yeah. on, we had a good defense. I mean, those guys were good. We were a good team, and so we won some games. I think the thing that Herman did best, I, I will not be critical. You want me to be critical? Read my book because I'm, I'm not afraid to criticize there. Um, he did a good job dealing with the players. As an ex-player, I think he understood some things. He, he was good at communicating with them, listening to their opinions. You know, did he always make the right decisions? No, I don't think he did. Um, his, his game management, he was actually probably actually very unprepared for the role, but he was, he was good with the players. He did a very nice job with that. Now, if you look at Eric, you know, Eric came out of a very good program with Bill Belichick. I mean, he learned a lot. You can learn a lot of football from that guy. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, maybe guys have tried to be him and that doesn't work too good. Um, Eric was very good at preparing and practicing for situations. He really did a nice job of, of showing them, teaching them, and, and doing a nice job with that. I, I thought Eric Eric did that, handled that very well. There were some times, I think, sometimes the way he communicated was was a little bit difficult, and he had some issues with that, um, with some of the players, with everybody. Not with me. I, I, I dealt with it. I was very clear to him, don't do that to me ever. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. Uh, there were some good things there. Rex walked into a pretty good team right. and he made the move to get Mark Sanchez and to put Mark in as a manageable quarterback with a team that could really run the football. We had a great offensive line coach with Bill Callahan. You know, don't forget yeah. we had LaDamian Tomlinson and those guys, you know, we, we had a good offensive line. I mean, this was a, this was a solid football team. Defense, you know, of course we had Drell Rivas. I had a very good group and we were a tough team. We were tough. And Rex understood that. And I think Rex did a very good job of putting that together. He also 
inherited and then brought in a couple very good coaches. We had a very good coaching staff um, that, that has gone on and done, done very well. And, uh, and we, we were pretty good. Now, all of a sudden, you know, we, we kind of ran out of gas a little bit and we hit some rough spots in the salary cap. And, and I'm not sure how, how that got managed as well as, as you wish it could have. And that's always tough. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're getting rid of Alan Fanica and we're signing Plexico Burris. Not good. I don't know. I just soon jump off the George Washington Bridge. Yes, I did make that. that move. That just does You see what I'm getting at? Yep. You know, because that was a good team. And it was a team that I knew that every anybody we played, we could beat. Now, right. were we going to beat them? No, we weren't an all-star team. We weren't. But we're, we're the team you didn't want to play because we were tough. Yeah. yeah, We were tough. We could hit. You know, we could run up. We led the league in rushing. I had an all-star team. Every time you know, I could beat you on any given play. I, mean, I, I love the guys I had. I, I, I never really did a good job of getting a, a punter. I had some punters, and I, I struck out. Everybody else, I, I, I did it really I, very well. But we were, we were good. You know, we, we, Rex would take Drell Revis and put him on one side and put everybody else on the other. And say, okay, let's see what you got. It was, it was fun. It was really fun. And then all of a sudden, it just sort of gradually began, you know, and they had that lockout, and, and we, we made some personnel moves, and it just sort of deteriorated. And that was time for me to retire. I was frustrated, and I left. But uh, I think both coaches had strengths. Rex is a very, very good defensive football coach, very good. He has a philosophy that he believes in with clock management and controlling the game through running the football. He believes in that. And our team exemplified that. Rex Rex is a tough guy. But, you know, but for some of the craziness, you know how Rex is, sometimes he says that crazy stuff. He's not that at all. Mm. He's just not. We had a disciplined football team. Nobody ever showed up late. We, nobody, we didn't have any problems. We, had, we did not have off-the-field problems. We had good guys that did things the right way. They really did. And, and uh, I, I'm prou- I was proud of it. You know, and it, it just was a good group of men that uh, that played pretty damn good football. And it could have gone could have gone to the Super Bowls that we didn't go. No, I get, I know that. But we were damn close and we were knocking on the door. And I think the uh, New York fans very much appreciated it and, and were part of what we did. 100 percent. And I really think that if you guys had beaten Pittsburgh, that you guys were going to win the Super Bowl. Well, you hope so. That's- I know, yeah. I know. We, 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 we were good enough to beat anybody. We weren't just an all-star yeah, team, that, but we were good enough. If we played well, we didn't make mistakes, didn't turn the ball over. Look out, because we were capable of winning, and that's how we felt. And it was fun to go to practice with that group. They were tough. They practiced hard. They played hard, and um, it was a ball. I, I had a ball with them. Of course, I've had a ball with a lot of teams. You know, I went to New Orleans and. I mean, I drew Brees, and we were damn good. We're in a championship game, so mm. I kind of had fun there too. So it's you know, most of my career, I've I've had a pretty good time doing this. I haven't won quite as many as I'd like to, but I'm pretty close. Now, Coach, I have a question for you, kind of bringing it to current day. A lot of fans are arguing a big debate between grass and turf with players getting hurt on turf. We saw it with Elijah Vera Tucker at Denver uh, two years in a row. Right. Do you think that, that do you think that grass would be a lot safer for players that you have seen throughout your career? I, it's it, it is safer. I think it is. I mean, I'm not. I, I understand. I'm not opposed to turf, but I'm not the one out there banging around on it. I think the players have have a have a good solid argument. I, I do. I, I know they've done the research on it. I, I think is is interesting. I'm I'm you know I'm trying. It's not right at the top of my my tongue right this moment, but uh, I don't know that. I, they don't make it unfounded. I, right. I think there's, I think there's ways that they can do it. You know, even the dome stadiums, some of the ones that are bringing the grass field in. Um, you know, we played at the, we played in, in, uh, in Las Vegas. And the field was beautiful. It was just beautiful. They, you know, they, they, you can, it can be done. It can be done. Uh, I think it's, it's something that, uh, it's a tough game. It game is so fast. It's so fast today, faster than ever. And I think that adds to the problem. And if that helps solve the problem, uh, then I, I'm in favor of it. 
Now, Liam, I just want to make sure I, I'm not going over the same topics again. Um, did you go over the the new onside kicks or not yet? Yeah, first thing we did. Yeah, we, yes, talk, we, we talked all about the kicking rule. The onside part of it is at the end of the game, it has to be declared. So we didn't talk about the onside, but it, it you can't just you can't just onside a kickoff anymore because the guys are way at the other end of the field. There's nobody there, <laughs> just a kicker. So, but the onside will be uh, you will declare it. Uh, you'll be able to line up. You've got, you know, you're, you'll be able to overload one guy and a little bit, which will help the kicking team a little bit, I believe, and uh, trying to make it a little bit more of a competitive play. The play pretty much uh, lately has gone completely in favor of the receiving team. And so I think they're trying to even it out a little bit and uh, give it a chance. So I, I, I'd like to feel, I think you'll see it even out a little bit. I think the numbers will come a little bit, bit a little bit, bit back more to reality than what they were and i think a kicking team i i don't mind it i we we opened the season with an onside kick yeah. i still think we got it we didn't touch it early but i lost that argument but i, I just I feel thought like we did it. it it's gonna be it's gonna last only a year uh, because look at the xfl you mean that you're talking about the whole new kick rule just the whole the hybrid thing. yeah because look at where it came from with the xfl now it's united okay. with the with the UFL. well here, here my question for you okay what's next then they revert back to how it was maybe no they, it's 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 an interesting these are all interesting questions um we'll see I, I i don't know enough to say i think it's worth taking a look at what's happened to the play the place become such a non-play i mean i i love the way the coverage is the way the new rules are were with the the, the, the kick before you, know, you don't have the wedges you can't hide behind a double team and trap you know, there's things that are have really you can't take a running start with the coverage so you, you've helped lessen some of the collisions i think that's important but with the ball you know they just blast touchbacks i proposed that we use three balls in the game three each team on offense has their own ball that's what they do now you know they bring them in the official checks them out checks them for pounds per square inch and they use that okay the kickers they take six new balls out of a box put the right pressure in them. Then, then the equipment managers have about a half hour, 40 minutes, something like that. And they kind of buff the ball up a little bit. Uh, some of the guys put a piece of AstroTurf on a table and they buff the ball just like you're shining your shoes. The ball's legal. It's not overinflated. It's 13 pounds per square inch, but it's a friendly ball that will compress when it's hit. Okay? All right. I would add, if I was going to keep the old rule, I would have had I would have had one more ball. You take it right out of the box, and they kick off with that ball. It will not compress very well. Instead of coming down six yards deep in the end zone, it'll come down at the three yard line, and you'll have a play. So I I would have I would have I would I could have done that, but you still have the play and you still have the collision, and that's what they're worried about. They want to try to balance that up a little bit, so they're going to give this a try how it's going to work we're all going to find out but right now you know that it, it's you're certainly not have a 60 yard run at anybody you know you've got a, a, t a 10 yard run and you're right into somebody's face yeah well i'm just curious uh, maybe you can clear this up for me now when they're when they're punting the ball right for this kickoff can they angle it and if well, it's not they... a punt now because the only the only time you can still punt it is after a safety okay so okay, so can't... it's a regular it's a regular kickoff. You kick off with a T. So if it goes, God forbid, like let's say it goes out of bounds, there's still they get it at the forty. Forty. Okay. All right. You don't want that. Right. Right. You don't want that. Where where the kicking team becomes rewarded, kicking team becomes rewarded, if the ball hits, squirts into the end. If it hits in the landing area, you know, from the twenty to the goal line, squirts into the end zone then and is not returned. Then the offense takes the ball at the 20, so the kicking team is rewarded. Now, if the ball gets kicked into the end zone on the fly or one of those types of things, and, and you know, for a, a touchback type thing, the return team gets the ball at the 30. So now the return team benefits. So you want to play. You want to play. You want, you want to play. If you kick it okay. out of bounds, you're still penalized. You're still penalized. So all the other things stay the same. Everything's pretty much the same. I'll tell you one will be interesting. You know what? I actually wish I had brought this up in front of all the uh, special teams coaches. To tell you the truth, I, I didn't know. We none of us did, and I didn't think of it either until I was going home. 
you know how many times, and let's say you're, you're up in New York and you're coming out to play to kick off and you go out and the ball blows off the tee. So you get a guy to come in and he holds the ball, right? Well, how do you do that now? When, when those other guys are way up there ahead of you, how do you do that? The guy have to run back? That's a good one. And I'm not sure the answer to that question. Yeah, that is a good question. So, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm just trying to make sense of this and see maybe there's a loophole. Is there any way to, let's say the punter just, I know, I know it's a kickoff, but to line drive it. At That's what you're going to see. But not at the kick returner. No, you're going to, you're, well, they're going to, they're going to put two guys deep. Everybody two will put guys. two deep. They'll get the line. The rule tells you that the coverage team lines up on the plus 40, 10 guys. All right. Mm. Now you have a five yard restraining area. Then the return team in the next five yards line up nine guys, right. nine, seven up front, mm -hmm. two a little bit behind them. Then you have two deep. You play too deep. So if they line drive a kick, say toward the number, what I think you're going to see a lot of, I believe, I think you'll see some like a line drive kick. I'm going to call it a dirty ball. It's yeah. kind of hitting squibs and maybe the guy touches it, doesn't quite handle it perfectly. And the advantage right. goes to the coverage team. If it hits and goes into the end zone and they don't get it back out and hits in a landing area, well, then the kicking team, you know, the, 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 the return team has to take the ball to 20. So it's an, it's a win for the kickers. So, mm. you know, everybody's got a little, so a lot of moving parts. We'll see who handles it the best. Are you oblig is the kicker obligated to kick it, to kick it to the returner? Can he kick it within that scrum? So we have that chance of a possible fumble recovery. If it, uh, if you mean, so let's say he just sort of, he popped it up short. And it hit where right where all those guys are standing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then then the ball. Then I believe I'm pretty sure. Then the ball cannot it is. That's that's an interesting question because that's one that we don't have. There's two things, and I, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not 100 percent sure just yet. Do they have an opportunity to return it, or does it automatically just get put at the 30 yard line? And and I think it's going to go to the 30. But be honest with you. That's what I'm, I wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back here in Florida. I'm not out there yet figuring every little part out. And, uh, though I'm not a thousand percent sure of that one. I will be, I will be, don't worry. But, I, exactly. but right today, today, I'm not hundred percent sure. Everything else I think I pretty much got, although I still don't know how they're going to handle the ball it. blows off the tee. I think that's an interesting one. Well, I'm going to show something you something that we're going to have to wait and see. Wait and see. Liam, you take over. I'm going to show the coach something really special, and I'm going to see if he remembers this. All right, give me All one okay. second. Okay. Go ahead, Liam. All right, so I had a couple more questions for you. Um, back at the owners' meeting, or the NFL honors, I should say, Woody Johnson kind of killed Zach Wilson's trade value. What do you think his trade value is right now? He said I'll, I'll last be year. With you. Let me. Let, okay. let, let me. Let me. I don't. I don't mean to be negative or disrespectful in any way but i don't know enough about those kinds of things to to make an honest a fair comment i just don't okay. so i'd That's rather fair. stay away i'd rather stay away from that because i really don't know exactly what where when or why because i haven't been part of it and and that's mm -hmm. just really not fair for me to talk about i i respect your opinion i, no, I hope no i hope you don't mind but that's just not no, for no. me. no not at all now coach I have a question for you. Okay. This was back in the Hofstra days, and I, I like. always, I loved, I loved. I, Me too. I live, in, I live in Brooklyn. I would always travel out there. I would watch the two days. I landed an amazing job right around the corner, and I would always see these amazing players and yourself, of course. But there was one day, one day I had a date, which didn't happen that often back then. And we're walking around, and Matt Turk was the punter. He kicked the ball off the side of his foot, and it went by the stands. And it was going, going, and everybody ducked. Lo and behold, I'm there with a date, and I fair caught it. I caught the ball. <laughs> Good now for you. The security guard came and said, hey, give me back the ball. So, you know, obviously, very respectful. I give him the ball. Herman Edwards comes racing down, yells at the, well, you know, not yells at the security guard, but it says he caught it. 
It's his ball. <laughs> Since then, you I've deserve it. Had it. <laughs> you deserve it. Do you remember that? I I, uh, I remember the incident. Know? I. I remember when that that actually took place. Yes, I remember that. Wow! Yeah. I got wow! Validity. Yeah, you should. You should have. You deserve. You caught it. You should get it. Yeah, I would have. If I trust me, I'd have given it to you after practice. I would have taken care of that. That was awesome. And <laughs> you, the best part you, was you caught it. You deserve it. You know, I, awesome. Yeah, my date's like, hey, you're gonna give me that ball. I'm like, you gotta rip it. This is my new date right now. This is my new date. <laughs> That's good awesome. For you. Thanks. No, this is good. Um, so what are your final thoughts on, on the Jets season th this year? I mean, oh, I, you know, as I, as I said, I, I, there's certain things I just don't feel comfortable oh, talking oh, about sorry. with them. Cause, but, but not, I, I, um, obviously, you know, you, you get Aaron Rodgers back. Mm -hmm. He's a good football player and, and he makes a difference. I, there, there's some weapons there. You know, those young kids are good. The interior of your defensive line is outstanding. I think your offensive line will get better. Right. You know, I think I think it's got a little bit better from what I see, um, though. I think you have a chance. Actually, I thought last year you'd be pretty damn good. And then, of course, you lost Aaron right away. Uh, and, and that made it a little bit tough for you. Um, I think I think it's it's you're, I think you're going to be very competitive. It's it's a good division. You know, Buffalo is very good. Miami's my, Miami's is really tough. You know, so you, you've, you've got some you know, you, you've got some teams you have to fight that are, that are pretty good football teams. Um, and I think it'll be a, a battle for you, but I think the New York Jets are a pretty solid football team. You know, when you've got a defense, you've got a great corner, you've got a couple young kids who are pretty darn good. You've got an, a, an inside of your defensive line, I think, that's outstanding. Right. You've got the one young kid that came along, I can't think of his name, but I was very impressed with him, uh, rookie last year, that got better and better as an edge rusher. Well, I think he's a, he's McDonald's. a guy that, that I, like, I like how he plays. Um, wow. That's your offensive crazy. line, I think, is in a, a process where they appear to be, you know, trying to develop I, a couple free agent things. I think are pretty solid there. You've got a hell of a receiver. You've got a couple guys there. You've got a quarterback that's that's pretty that's a damn good football player. Right. You're, you 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 should be a competitive football team. I think you should be a competitive team. I think if I were a fan, I would very much expect that. Of course, you have to stay healthy. You can't you can't lose Aaron in the first quarter. Come on, no. what are you going to do? I mean, no. it's, it's just, but I think I would, uh, I, I would expect a pretty, a pretty doggone, pretty doggone good, solid football team to compete in a tough division, yeah. in a tough division, because everybody's pretty damn good. Everybody's yeah. pretty good. You know what the thing is, Jason, that coach. Coach, you know, that's the thing, right? Like as Jet fans, we're so used to injuries and it doesn't phase us with Testaverde in 98. And then Chad, Chad, you know, that 2002 season which i'm sure that you remember vividly sure. it was a a cinderella ride what an amazing year that was to to be afc east champs at the last game of the season against the packers here at home what was that like being around someone like chad and how can chad what would have been if all those injuries didn't happen to to our boy who we love the most bennington well you know that's just uh you know, we, we were a good football team I mean, he was part of a good team. I mean, come on, the receivers are good. The offensive line was good. And you know, we could hand the ball off to Curtis Martin. And I mean, come on, the guys are good. We had a good defense. It was a good team. Um, I had a very good group. I had an excellent group. And we were, but yeah, you know, I had, there's a point in time where I had, you know, Chad Morton and Santana Moss. Oh, my God. Santana Moss was leading the league in punt returns. Chad Morton was leading the league in kick returns. What a dream. Um, Chad Pennington played. One, one thing that I, I never quite totally appreciated for him, to be honest with you. He played in the shortest field in the league, mm -hmm. and he never mentioned it. Though I'm still not happy. So what do you want me to tell you? I am, because right. I'm not. We led the <laughs> league. In the starting, we led the league in starting field position. Yeah, yeah. We were good. Every time we ran the ball, it looked like we we're going to score. Yeah. Come on, Chad Morton, those guys. We were good. We were really good. Yes, sir. And we just we, and it helped. It, it was a team that had a lot of good parts, and he certainly was very much a part. Of, of, of that. I, I, I'm not being at least bit um, disrespectful at all of him in that regard. But uh, that's something he very much benefited from. That's only a little tiny bit. But I mean, there was one game we played Buffalo. I mean, it was like we were starting and damn, they're down to the goal line or whatever. We, it was ridiculous. But we, we, that was a good football team. There were a lot of good parts to it. And um, 
you know, then they, some guys got banged up and we lost some guys through free agency and some of that craziness. Remember that that mess with Washington raided all our guys and Le I'm Lavernius still mad Cole. at Mike Tannenbaum for that. But yep, yeah. Lavernius Coles, Randy Thomas, Chad Morton. Yeah, uh, the list goes on and on. I, I'm surprised they didn't raid any John of the Hall. fans. John Hall. John. Oh my goodness! I almost got into a car accident with John Hall uh, leaving the parking lot from Hofstra. He. I'm looking at him and I'm like, I'm sorry. Please don't get injured. Please don't get injured. It was a good. Oh, those are good. They were good teams. They were fun to be a part of, and uh, you know, a, a good group that that really had had a chance to win a lot of games, and we did. We were good. Now, we, of course, you know, we were. Uh, we were battling, you know, with a uh, with with you know the the emergence of Tom Brady oh and and the yeah. New England Patriots. We were fighting the start of that, and they were a good team. Remember, they had a great defense. That's how they really got started. You know, when Brady first started, they were just tremendous defense. Then they got you know Brady got going, and the receiving core came along, Wes Welker and all those guys, and uh, yeah. and and they were very very good. But you know, it was a good it was good battles, good battles, and the the New York Jets were. Uh, Fun to be a part of and, and a good solid team, and you, you just would you know hope that that they would, you know, eventually get back to that to that point and uh, be able to do that because that that was a lot, lot of lot, lot of good football players there. Definitely, uh, Danny. Have anything else for Coach? Uh, I just want to extend my my gratitude, my appreciation uh, to you, Coach, to coming on. Just I mean, just spending what almost an hour talking ball with us what a dream come true no, it's fun for me you're a legend it's you know i mean i enjoyed I, as i made it very clear uh i i know I, I feel very fortunate in where i've been able to coach you know i was at miami all those years with coach shula and marino and then went up to new york in that great time you know part of a tough time with 9 11 and then saw yeah. the emergence of a heck of a football team a team that was in the playoffs you know most all the time and so i loved it i, I loved the new york fans I love going into the city. I love being a part of it. And, uh, you know, and it was just a great experience for me. And then so, you know, and then going to New Orleans and, you know, being in the championship games. And now at Denver, uh, which I, I, I'm certainly not going to be there forever, but I'm going to give it one more shot. And uh, trying to help rebuild that, put that football team together. Because there, there's times last year we played very, very well. And, and, but we, we, we got we to level that field off and get back to that a little bit. But... My times at New York, come on. I had a ball. Can I loved I, it. I'm going to ask one more question. This is a classic question. Back in the day, how was it to be a part of that shootout in 1986 with Marino versus O'Brien? You were there, right? In 1986, I was not there. Oh, you weren't? Oh, I thought no. you were there. I'm sorry. I came right after that. 87 was my first year there, I uh, believe. No, I wasn't there for the O'Brien. Thing. Wiki, Wikipedia was wrong today. I, I was there, you know, I was there a long time. Uh, maybe I was I there in 80. What you're, what you're talking about. I, I remember the great game up in, 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 up in New York. That's the way we, we had. I was there. I yeah. was there that day. You guys came on and won at the end, although the, you've got to give me a break because we it was in overtime. Yeah. So we kicked off. So? We caused a fumble and we recovered a fumble and they ruled that he was down. He wasn't yeah. down. We got the ball. We to kick the field goal. Won the damn game. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Coach You're Shula, right. Coach You're Shula, right. Coach Shula cursed that guy for the rest of his life. He was so mad. We we tackled a guy. We was a fumble. I guarantee it was a fumble. But they ruled that it was down, and they got the ball and went down and scored. Right. We'd have got. We'd kicked the field goal. We won. We nailed the guy and got the ball. He fumbled it. Oh. So you know, I wouldn't. But it was a great game. Great. Game. Two good quarterbacks playing their hearts out both of them were very good and i was of course part of that crazy game with the uh you know the spike play the the fake you know the, the oh, fake the fake spike yeah the fake spike yeah no 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 that was you know th those were all i was also a part of the game where we had the big halftime lead and we lost at the end mm. we were up like 28 oh. to we were killing them and they came you back were, with vinnie testaverde you were there in 2000 that's right you were on the that's when it end. was Oh my goodness! I thought you were ours. Uh, um, my memory is is it's it's in that. Green As a matter zone of fact, right now. your your coach at that time was Al um, the Monday Night Miracle. Al Gro. Al Gro. Al Gro called me that next week and offered me a job in New York. Wow. He did. Yeah. He did. 
he called me up and asked me if I wanted to come up there because we ran like three kickoffs up over midfield and we couldn't get a first down. That's right. And you guys kept getting a ball. He said, he said you killed us. I, I had a very good, we had a good day. But it was, it was, a, it was good football. You know, just played great. And we were a good team and you, know, you won the game. Yeah, that was so, a wild game. I mean, I, that I, was a wild game. A lot, lot of good, a lot of good battles. I, I, I go back and I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I, I loved all the times and it was just a great experience. So anyway, Monday. I think you guys will be a, a good, solid football team. I think your fans should be excited, and and I'm uh, and I'm hoping that uh, that that we can that we can get the same type thing going at, at Denver. I think we're we have a chance to. I think it to be pretty good. I know Sean Payton knows how to coach, sure. and yeah. um, and I'm you looking forward to it. it. So he, uh, again, before you know it, it'll all be gone and it'll be off and rolling. But again, thank you and uh, the, all the, the the people in New York. It was the greatest. I had a ball, and I and I will always be very very thankful for my times there. Yeah, as will as we will. So thankful to have you there. And I just want to wish you the best of luck with the Denver Broncos this upcoming season. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, guys, good night. You got it. We love have you. A good one. Have a good one. All right, Take thank care. you. Take it easy. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are going to... So that was awesome. And I want Liam to do one thing okay. very loudly. I want you to say, now batting. Now batting. Wait, where's the echo? I don't know. It went away. Oh, it was Westhoff. He told me it wasn't him. It's him. It was him. Wait, now I got an echo. I hear the echo on your end. I don't hear it on my end now. No, yeah, I don't hear it on my end. You don't hear it anymore, right? No. I've, uh, yeah. Foul. I guess That's it was. Him. Yeah, you see? Sleeping with the enemy? <laughs> see what happens? Foul, coach. You don't do that to us, Jet fans. Oh, man. I loved, I loved the fact where he had to give that dig at the end. I'm like, yo, remember with the 86 game and the shootout? He's like, yeah, 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 I remember. And then the fumble. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. but he is right in that aspect. You know, football's football, right? How many times we've seen, you know, football on our end where the Jets are winning all of a sudden, they're like, there's a fumble, we recover it. Then all of a sudden it's not there anymore. And then he's like, yeah, but remember the fake spike? Ah oh, man, he just like that dagger, like right here. Yeah. I remember yeah. that game, man. That game, dude, we were flying high. That was the most Jets game that you could ever imagine. Boomer and Siason just yep. nailing Rob Moore, Johnny Mitchell. It was just a great game. And then at the end, that happened. And you're like, when is this going to be not the same old Jets? And that's what sucks, man. You know, in all these years. And then that Monday night miracle, dude, it's a miracle. Yep. I wasn't arrested that night because I'm there. Well, I must've been like 18 or 16 watching the game in my room. And it was like 30 to three or seven, something like that. And all of a sudden I wouldn't turn it off because Arnold Schwarzenegger was there, um, you know, in the booth with Dennis Miller, Boomer yep. and Sison and Al Michaels and Arnold's like, no, nah, the Jets are going to win the game. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I'm like, all right, if Arnold said it, if the Terminator said it, then it's there's got to be like some validity, right? Joe, lo, you know, lo and behold, when Hall kicked that winner, dude, I opened up all the windows, dude, all the windows. My mom is fucking hit me with a freaking broom, like shut up, the fucking tenants are gonna leave. <laughs> we won the game. I mean, the the Jets and Dolphins, that's the rivalry, folks. That's it. It's not the Jets and Patriots. That was no rivalry. What Brady did to us for 20 years, that's mopping the floor. That is not nowhere near. But the few times that we beat him, that was beautiful. That was amazing. But the Jets and Dolphins, that's what you got to expect here. And yes, Dark Soldier, you're 100% right. It was 30 to 7 going into the fourth. Impossible odds to even win that game at that point. But if you think about it, after coming off the heels of today, right? You got. This dude getting traded, Diggs, from Buffalo. Buffalo is diminishing in talent. So it's bringing up to the forefront the Jets versus the Dolphins for the East. Guys, that's where it is. I know we yep. got to respect the Buffalo Bills. I get it. 
they have won the East for the past, what, two, two, three years, whatever the case is. I couldn't care less for Canada. But, like, right now, it's Rodgers versus Tua. And I did not give Tua the respect that he actually merited last year. Dude balled out. I get it. He has Tyreek yep. Hill, Waddle, you know, a good run game. But that offensive mind that they have there at head coach, you can't you can't exclude that and push that to the to the back burner and be like, ah, oh, whatever. That's a head coach there. Yep. That's a head coach. As strange as he is. As weird as he is, that's a head coach. He's always with a freaking playbook. Huh? This is my playbook. This is my playbook. All right. All right. Playbook. Not like Salah. Salah has a lot to prove this year. I'm sorry. That's he has a very enormous task ahead of him because Rogers is coming back. Offensive line is set. The defense keeps getting better. The draft isn't even here. It's him and Ulbrick. Ulbrick wanted to leave. Like, let's not forget that. That that to me is my eyebrows are like really high up there when he almost took that Niners job. What does that yeah. say? That says, what, is Salah a, a lame duck in this situation? Things don't work out because Ulbrich was offered a better job with the San Francisco 49ers with stability. You know, you have Shanahan at head coach there, Lynch as as a GM. Great. Yep. They They went elsewhere. To me, if this doesn't pan out that well, if there's turmoil in the middle of the season and you're at that cross crossroads, don't be surprised if Albrecht takes over as head coach. God forbid we ever get to that position. But I don't think the Jets would want to let go of Albrecht because he's doing a he is doing the bulk of the work on defense. I was not a big Albrecht fan when he came from Atlanta. I was not a big fan, but damn, man. He gets those boys ready to go. A hundred percent. Now Salah has to stop running up and down the stairs. He has to stop. He has to start running his team before games. This is where I get upset with Salah. He's entering what? Correct me if I'm wrong. Fourth year? Four. Four. Yep. And his record is not good. And I get it. He hasn't had the quarterback for success. But there are certain things that I mean, two years ago, Zach was not playing good at Foxborough. That remember that that, that nasty yeah. game, that weather. Yeah. That was the he got that hurt that was, game too. Yeah, that is that the game the, he got hurt? No, that's the game where Zach sucked, and instead oh, the of two inches. Out, yeah, that the was two the inches game, game where they beat us on the special special teams uh, return back. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, as a right. as a head coach, you need to win the game. You need like this is for you. This is what you built your resume for. You had to pull him and put Mike White in. You would have won the game, and you would have had the greatest opportunity to make it into the playoffs because then Mike White balled out. You know, he, he did. You know, playing against Minnesota, almost pulling that off. Barrios had freaking, you know, butterfingers. Yep. You know, that's where it gets – I get pissed off at Salah. You have to. This is your make-or-break year, and it – they may not give you the entire year. You know, correct me if I I'm think, wrong. I think they will, to be honest with you. I think they will. There's there's some smoke, man. That report that was out there, even though that the athletics said, nah, you know, they weren't fighting, they weren't yelling. Let me tell you, man, the spotlight when you play for New York and when you're not in New York but you play for an organization – that's from New York. The spotlight is continuously on you. So what does that say? They saw something. There was bickering there. There's, there was something. To me, they don't see eye to eye. They don't. Because as much as you hate Woody, all the Jet fans, me, me too. I'm not a big Woody fan. Nope. But Woody has been through Mangini, disciplinarian. Herman Edwards, who was a buddy-buddy player coach but he kind of he placed discipline when when it merited rex ryan again bravado whatever you want to call it he plays discipline todd bowles as much as i didn't like todd bowles there were times where he showcased that i'm the head coach here 
And you knew that because Bowles came from, as a Arizona. player, not only Arizona, as a player with the Washington Redskins. Redskins, yep. Playing under a Hall of Fame head coach, Joe Gibbs. Mm-hmm. He knew, all right, this, this is what a head coach does. You're not playing well. You suck, this and that. You're getting benched. There was some sort of, like, fear. I don't think that the players fear Salah. And I think no. Woody Johnson sees that. He does not like that. I think there's friction, man. And if the Jets start off two and three, God forbid, or two and four, that's the crossroads that I'm talking about. Two and four. I don't think we're going to, they're not going to be given mulligans anymore. All right, we'll give you next year. We're giving two and four. Who is the strongest person to become head coach to steer this ship into the right place? To me, it's not Nathaniel Hackett. It's not. Because he has to focus straight on the offense. He's trying to elevate and press the fast forward button to bring last year up to speed with this year with Aaron Rodgers. I think it's Ulbrich. Yeah, and going back to what you said about players not respecting Robert Sala, the perfect example is that was that Thursday night Jacksonville game when CJ Ozama's dressed up as what is he, the Grinch? Yeah. You know? Grinch. You're you're telling me and you look around the league. Sean Payton, would he he would definitely not allow it. Would Bill Belichick allow it? No. No. Would Mike Tomlin allow it? Horrible. No. None of these other like prominent head coaches, they tell him to go home. They're gonna say, get out of that ridiculous uniform. And you either play and you're serious because this is a business trip. Now, mind you, we win that game. We're most likely going to the playoffs. Right. And then you'd probably that that would probably buy solid two years. That was the tsunami, right? Yeah, I was at that game. That was the Thursday night game right before Christmas. Yep. That's what, that's I, I think I think Joe was at that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Joe was at that game as well. He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah. He regrets <laughs> it. He regrets it. I do too. I do too. Yeah, I, there's certain things like, again, the whole Mike White thing, dressing up, you know, as a bunny and ah, not not a big fan of that, man. But with that being said, pushing off that to the side, it is a promise, promising year, right? You look at what we have built right before Easter, the majority of the gaping holes are all filled up. Like to me, I'm like, whoa, Joe Douglas came to bat. That's one thing I'm going to give Woody for this year. I think he finally unshackled Joe Douglas and said, here's the money. Here are all the players that you want to restructure their contracts. Do it. Do whatever you need to do. I want a solid offensive line because Rodgers showcased throughout, what, in a span of how many weeks? What, 13 weeks? He got back from an Achilles tendon injury? Dude, I sprained my knee. I can't walk straight for the past seven months. And this guy is, a, you know, he's a savage. I think Woody respects that. He said, all right, Joe, do what you need to do. And he did it. Like this is, at, at first of free agency, everybody thought, all right, he's sleeping just like me. I'm like, Joe is sleeping. This is yep, knocked it out of the park, dude. Look at all the free agent acquisitions. We're heading into the draft with so many options. Trade up, trade down. What what position are we getting? Offensive tackle, tight end, generational t- tight end. How to throw that one in there? Wide receiver. What are we doing? What are we doing? Anything. The sky's the limit, and he yep. knows it. This is an all in year, dude. Do you want to take some callers? You want me to throw it out there? So my tablet is about to die. I can hop off and then hop back on with my laptop. I need about no. ten minutes. I know. I hope- you you want to take it? You want to take the? You want to take it over for a little while? Let me see here. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't see why not. Let me see. All right. Whoever is interested in calling in Armand, come on, get in here, man. Come on, it's Armand. Been, it's been, it's been too long, Armand. Come on, man. Uh, we, we need your savvy knowledge. Um, we're going to be doing a draft. What is that called again? A draft uh, party. Draft, not the draft party. Oh, draft party. My pants. No. The other one, mock draft, mock draft, mock draft. That's okay. the one we're going to be doing with Armand. We're going to see yep. if Luca come uh, come through. That'll be fun. Um, we're probably going to do it. Mock draft. There you go. See Armand, you got to come on here, man. You know, Red John is here. 
All right. Armand's going to be coming in shortly. Oh, Charles. Yeah. Charles All right. So you, you're going to entertain Charles, and I'm going to – give me 10 minutes. I need 10 minutes. I, I got something I got to do quickly. Do I'm going to – Do you think, uh, man? I got this over. I got stay this. on. All right? Stay on. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a deal. All right. So All right. we're going to bring on Charles. Like uh, – hey. Hey, you are. Charles, I love your name, man. I'm going to put you on this side. No problem. Right here. So we can look at each other. No problem, man. How's your hey, family Charles. doing? Ah, uh, crazy good, man. How about you? Good. Uh, my Easter was very good. I saw my grandmother this past Monday. Awesome. Uh, Monday, excuse me. She came back from the hospital that day. She couldn't um, breathe properly oh. at times um, over the weekend, but she's feeling a lot better now. Okay. Excellent, man. Good to hear that, man. Yeah, I wish her well. You Thank you, I mean? man. I, I hear it. You know, I, I go through it as well. And, you know, it, it just it showcases the type of man you are, man. You know, you're there. Enjoy the times with family, man. It, it I'm jealous volumes. of you, man. You got a lot of Jets memorabilia. Uh, I'm not jealous. I'll, I will send all this to you because this is just a nightmare. Like, I wake up in this nightmare and I'm like, ah. Not really. I love this stuff. I, I love all my jet stuff. If I could show you around here one day, I'm going to do like a MTV crib type of thing here. I'll show you where the, uh, the leaks are, uh, where the, uh, torn pillows are as well, because after jet games, I get very angry and I don't drink alcohol. So that much. That's anymore. a good thing, man. That's a good, I thing. have, that's right, man. You know, just, just, uh, just living it up. So Charles, what, what's going on? I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the interview that we had with, with Coach West talking, I didn't. Uh, I was playing one of my games. I'm sorry, man. I didn't no worries. Catch no worries. A lot of people did that, so it's okay. No problem. It is. I was also was watching like. the Yankees game too. I'm a Yankees fan, by the way. Are they winning? They won six to five in eleven innings over the Diamondbacks. So they're undefeated, right? So far, they're six and one. They wow. lost yesterday, seven nothing. Unbelievable, man. I mean, are you a, a baseball fan, uh, David? No. Dan? No, no, no worry. My, my my folks call me David all the time, so you don't worry about that. I I like I'll watch baseball, but I'm not like into it. I like the Mets, but I'll I'll root for the Yankees. Like I'm one of those with the, with hockey. I love the Rangers. If the Islanders are are playing, all right, I'll go for the Islanders. Me, big Jet fan, anti Giant fan. Like to I know football, you told me that like, you told I, me I, that, I and I can understand because some Giant fans are pricks. I went to high school with some of them. Uh, yeah, they. Next but my, neighbors. let me tell you something. My grandfather grew up a Giants fan, okay. and he wasn't like that. That's one of the reasons why I have respect for the Giants because of people like him. Plus, let me tell you a story. Let's when do the it. Giants were playing the Patriots in the Super Bowl, most of my classmates were spoiled, rotten, juvenile Patriot fans. They okay. were because they were talking about crap at all the other teams they played against, calling them pee wee teams and all this other shit. So when they call the Giants, you know, amateurs, mm -hmm. fakers and all that. So I was like, you know what? I hope the Giants beat them so they can come crying to their mamas the next day. Right. And when the Giants beat them in the Super Bowl, which was I thought was one of the best Super Bowls I've ever seen in my life, one of the best mm -hmm. football games I've ever seen in my life. That's how hard fought it was. The next day, they're all quiet as a church mouse. They're like this. <laughs> and you know what? Because of that, I, I then and for sale, they had like a, a special sale. Where they were giving away giant Super Bowl forty two championship towels. I yeah. still have mine downstairs. I love it. Like like what? swing towels, so I can Yeah, I still have that. It still fits me good pretty much, basically. Yeah. Charles, you're I, gonna hate you're gonna hate me though. You're gonna I know you're anti giant that. fan because of the fans, and I understand you, that. You know, in that Super Bowl, you know who I went for. Tom Brady and the Patriots. You're not the I first one. I, um I, one of my I English can't. teachers in high school rooted for them too. You know why? Because it was the closest that as a fan, I got to having the Super Bowl so close to me because it was in our division. Like, that was my mindset. I'm like, I just wanted in the division. I want to say, you know what? We're getting our ass kicked over and over because we have the Super Bowl champs in our house. You know, that that's what I kept on saying, you know? So, uh, I don't, I don't hate know. you, man. I'm not one of those assholes. I'm <laughs> All right, so I'm not, I'm not the same. All right, cool. So this is good. This is a good thing. So I'm not the only one that went for the Pats. I, I'm a, a lot of people Tom did, man. You weren't the only one. I'm a big Tom Brady fan, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I, You're I, not I, the I, only person that is. I went to college with one, too, but he was an asshole about it, though. Hmm. I won't defend Brady. I, I like, I love greatness. Like, if you think about it, right, What like the greatest Super, Super Bowl quarterbacks, even non-Super Bowl quarterbacks, they were in our division. 
Jim like, Kelly, Dan Marino. Dan Marino. Oh my goodness. Johnny Unitas. Johnny U. Oh man, dude. I, it's like, and we had what Ken O'Brien. Ken O'Brien wasn't Todd. too bad though. I love I, 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 that. So Ken O'Brien. The thing is, I know Jeff fans lost their shit when we dropped. But the thing is, the dude had Hall of Fame talent. The problem is, and my dad will tell you, Joe Walton was a shitty head coach. If he played for Bill Walsh or Bill Parcells, he'd be in the Hall of Fame right now. You're, you, you couldn't be any more right. And same thing with Al Toon. Al Toon was such a beast. And you know what? Speaking of Al Toon, I'm going to bring our Jets historian. This is the man of the hour, dude. The, this You you know Afrim. Afrim? Afrim. How are you doing, Afrim sir? How are you? How are you, Charles? Good, sir. How are you feeling? Good, good. What am I, what am I a historian all of a sudden? Because I well, love speaking – about Jets history with you, and now Charles might be taking that mantle. No, that's we fine. Got that's fine. We got I, my father passed down his knowledge onto me. My dad said this about Altoon. From a town perspective, he was just as good, if not, might be better than Jerrish. But of course, history uh, tells otherwise. But Altoon, from what I understand, was a phenomenal wide receiver. He was Jets. he was clutch hands, but he took a lot of. Uh, he kept my dad hit. said he kept sending them over, kept sending them over the middle, and I kept getting them killed. Yeah, it was a different time then. You could really hit somebody. <laughs> Nailed them. So uh, Afrim, what's he had going multiple on concussions. Yeah. Afrim, did it, you hear the uh, the Westoff interview? How, how'd you yeah, like it? it was very good. Did you like the echo? I didn't hear any echo. I don't know. No? You, no. I oh, heard something like that. So, Mr. Yeah. Afrim, how's your family doing? Good, good. How about yours? Mine is doing very good, thank you. I just went very to – uh, I don't know if anyone's told you this, but I'm um, – but doing the career development program in my local JFK hospital. And these past couple of weeks on Wednesdays, I've been going to this law firm in Maplewood and I'm helping them out, answer phone calls, do some filing. So, good. so yeah, I'm, they Any love me. There. Very good lovely experience. People. That's what's important. But so the thing is, we're going to, we're going to try to keep this on a, a two kind of like, um, interview type of thing. So, Charles, my man, thank you so much for coming on, brother. All right, man? No problem, sir. As always, have a great one. We'll listen, we're going to have another show tomorrow. Fans, uh, more than welcome. Uh, I'm going to try to throw something out there on Twitter tomorrow, and we just want to hear from the fans. We'll give everybody five minutes. I don't go on Twitter, but I'll be sure to be with you guys on tomorrow. I love it. Charles, have a great night, man. You too, sir. Later. Uh, Charles is awesome. Listen, so... I, just hearing Mike Westhoff talk about the 1986 shootout. Did you see the fumble? I I, I wish you would have called in. I would have loved to bring you on. Is there some truth behind that? If you you got to watch the video. Um, it was close. It was his knee down? But looked like the ball was out, and they called it. And there was so no to, replay. To provide some context for our viewers. We're talking about the 1986 Jets Dolphins shootout, where once O'Brien hit Wesley Walker, when he went in, right into the end zone, that's three seconds the of the game. Last three seconds of the game went on to overtime. Miami kicked off, and it seemed like one of the Jets returners fumbled the ball, and they did not call the fumble. So what Mike Westhoff was was stating was that was a fumble. Had that occurred and went through they would have kicked the field goal uh, uh yeah they were they were close yeah that would have been the... who was the was it stoyanovich or no it wasn't it wasn't him yet right as uh the place oh, kicker for their kicker no right it, it wasn't it wasn't him I yet. Don't think so. he came later because our, our kicker was pat Leahy. yeah oh he's the man Did, were you a Leahy fan or no yeah i enjoyed it lay in the beginning wasn't so good but then he he was able to 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 uh Straighten out his kicks because he was a soccer guy, right? Oh, really? Soccer kick. Yeah, gotcha. he came on the side. Yeah, but he 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 was, it was a span where he was hitting fifty yarders with no problem. That's awesome. No, he you was know? he was one of those man. I mean, I grew up a whole different watching. team. They had offensive line. They had a tight end. Make they had sure, man. receivers, and the only thing that, I tell you, the only thing that prevented uh, O'Brien from to be more, more, um, get more accolades was he held on to the ball too much. He got sacked too many times. He didn't get rid of the ball. But was that the scheme or was it like that was him? 
That was him. That was him holding on to it. Didn't get rid of it. He was trying to make the play, but it was getting he was getting sacked. You got to get rid of the ball. That was it. Just get rid of the ball. Didn't see anything. He had good wide receivers. Now, was that the reason that Walton went to Pat Ryan, the backup, who to me had a gun for an arm? Like I absolutely love. Pat would stay Pat in Ryan. the last second. Pat Ryan would stay in. He would take the hit. Yeah. He stay in the last second. Take a hit. No problem. He was a beast. But I think it also, uh, if anything, it was more than uh, Kenny being hurt or something. I don't. He would never put him um, to uh, take over a game unless it was uh, some injury or it was late in the game and mm. and they had the lead or something like that. Because Pat Ryan back then, you wouldn't put your backups in unless you had to. Yeah, but remember, I think it was '86 where. In the playoff game, the AFC divisional, I think it was no, it was the eight, the wild card game, where he started Pat Ryan and benched O'Brien. It was against the Chiefs. I don't remember that to be honest. That one was he. They won the game. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know what? We gotta we gotta zoom this thing more. We gotta go back to the future. Are you ready? Yeah. We gotta go back. We're in the DeLorean. We're coming out, and our first pit stop coming out of this amazing flat car with the dock is Armand. Armand. <laughs> what's going on, brother? Hey, Dan. Hi, Afram. Hello, Hello Armand. I love How about voice. that brawl tonight at the garden? What yeah, I don't get that. I don't know what the purpose of that was. But... Wait, wait, wait. What happened? What happened? What happened? So the, I'm lost. The, the Devils are playing the Rangers tonight. And Let me see. Let me see. there was, a, a, I guess, the, the, the first. As soon as the, they dropped the puck, four fights. Oh, that's my. That's Eight my people Rangers ejected. Game. Eight people ejected is right. They're I know. Why, I, I actually know the answer to why they fought. We so the the hit on uh, what you call it last time, but not when he was uh, suspended. When no, he hit... it has I to know, do with the I, fact that they I, both lost no, no. to the Penguins yesterday and Monday. <laughs> no, it's because one of the Devils teams they uh, they ate meat last Friday. That's probably what it was. That's probably what it was. But what happened? Like what, that. But who's winning the game? Most importantly, Let's it's a tie. See. Uh, right now it's now. three three go it's seven and seven Armand. minutes and 40 seconds left How'd you pick i was at the penguin it? i was at the penguin devil game yesterday with a few friends from work what's your record what's, what's the penguins record i don't even know but like we, they're they not seeing the playoffs back. let me put it that way they're going into the we're, playoffs they're not well, seeing the playoffs oh they well, suck i don't believe they're going to make the playoffs but technically right now because of the back-to-back oh. -back wins right they actually do have a shot to make the wild card and they actually do have a shot if the Flyers stink up the joint the next few games, they can make third in the division. Yeah. I'm not Is it that close? Yeah, they're, they have 79 points right now, Pittsburgh. Wow. And they're, they're, they can get to the third wild card spot. Between the, they, we play Washington on Thursday. All right. I mean. Uh, yeah, no, Tampa's got 79. Yeah, yeah. You got the Islanders and Red Wings in front of you, and oh, Washington. Washington, and I don't think no one's going to catch up to uh, Tampa. Armand, if the Penguins face the Islanders, you coming over? You don't want me over, Dan. I'll yeah, be not? No, 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 no. Wait, time out. I am not an Islander fan. Oh, I know you're not. You're a tweener. I am a tweener, so I will gear up in in Penguins. You know, I got it. I, I can wear a Danny DeVito shirt, all right, from Batman 2. And I will go to that 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 stadium, whatever you want to call it, UBS, USB port stadium, whatever the case is, and I will be your wingman. All right? Not a fan of the Islanders. All right? I'm a Ranger fan. That's it. Done. Unless I put money on the Islanders. <laughs> Then I so I actually have a tweet from today uh, from it. Spot Rack. They updated the fifty uh, the cap spaces for the teams. Okay. The, uh, the updated top fifty one NFL cap spaces. This is according to Spot Rack's Twitter. Number one, the Patriots at forty seven million. Number two is the Commanders at forty three. The Titans are third with thirty four. The Eagles are fourth with thirty two. Tied at the bottom for dead last is the Tampa Bay Bucks and the New York Jets at two million. Yeah. Oh. 
And not far above them is the Bills now because they took a hit. A on, big hit. Like $4 million, yes, right? The, bill, the, the Bills are tied with Cleveland and Carolina at $4 million. Right. So they got no money. A, they got contracts that they probably – the only thing they can do is extend them, mm-hmm. but it's players that should be retired by now. What's his name's contract kills them? Um, the edge rusher. Allen. Oh, Ma- Von Miller. Von Miller's oh, contract no. kills them if they if he extends they could extend it or, or restructure it but you know he's ready to retire you're going to hold on it's going to be dead money for future years that's right they have no wide receivers except for Curtis Samuel they're going to rely on 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 maybe the tight ends yeah um, they got nothing to give to get T Higgins they could probably give up picks but they don't have they, money they to have, pay him they, no. That because I, I was thinking they would go after T, and then I remembered that also Ayuk is probably out there, yeah, but he needs an extension as well. So yeah, you I, would have to restructure Josh Allen's contract in order to even fathom any of those players. And I don't know how much you're going to get out of that one either, exactly. So that's why yeah. the, the Bills are in, in a very bad position, yeah. and if it opens up the floodgates for us, yeah. finally, we see a team yeah. that's vulnerable. Do you know who's in a, in a real bad position now? Miami Texans, because oh yeah, if you think he's if you think he's he's a he was a problem with Buffalo. You think those two wide receivers that they have are younger and 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 want the ball as much? There's going to be big, big in locker room issues because you, they're going to want their share of throws, uh, and, and, and they're actually. Technically, they're four or five deep. Yeah, <laughs> because they have um, they have John Mechie. Right. They also have Noah Brown. Right. So yeah. they are technically five deep at the wide receiver position. So if you think he's, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if Brown or Mechie is traded to a team. Yeah. But if you think he's disgruntled now, <laughs> it will be more oh, disgruntled there, especially there. But well, I also know, think I think his guarantees run out after ne- like the next two seasons, so he's probably yeah. there just the next two years, yeah. especially at age thirty-one. So I just so want to he, take a little bit of a timeout here. Yeah. Just want to thank all everyone watching right now. Um, huge, enormous. We're going to have a lot of guests coming on. So if you can, it just it takes less than a second. Just hit that subscribe button. It just means that much to us. We're trying to expand. We're going to have an amazing guest this Saturday. Uh, we're just trying to get confirmation and, you know, just hit that subscribe button it means the world to us. So let's keep going. I mean, Dark Soldier says, is he in legal trouble? Von Miller? I think, yeah, I think he has a uh, a domestic violence charge. Oh, my God. What's going on with these players? What are you doing? You have the world by the balls. You make millions. What are you doing? Why would you ever do something stupid like that? Leave. Just walk out. Like well, you're having a, a bad conversation with your wife or your girlfriend. Leave. Well, look at Rasheed Rice. Look at the incident he had with the uh, the highway. Yep. Oh, my God. It goes to show you. Having that money doesn't, uh, doesn't guarantee you from uh, shit like this happening. You know? Nope. It, it, it's heartbreaking. Like if you think of it, it, it's like at what point is enough enough? But again, I, I got to steer this shit back to the Jets. Liam, uh, I, that's I, this is from December for Von Miller. Yep. He was charged by police with third degree felony assault of a pregnant woman, oh. which is punishable by two to ten years in prison and a ten thousand dollar fine. He 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 posted a five thousand dollar bond. Wow. But didn't he get suspended for that during the season at the end of the um, season? Like four pretty or five sure games? he did. I'm pretty sure he did. How are you so, giving the green light? How are you giving the green light to come back to play the in the NFL? Like that those are the type of things that you start thinking, is is the NFL okay with this stuff? Like they'll they'll suspend you and then yeah, no, no. You know what? You're, you're selling tickets. That's one of those one and done. You hit a pregnant woman, you are done. And a fine. Like, to me, it's one of those where that's where you have to really hit them in their pockets. You're about to assault a woman. You do that. It's not a $500,000 fine. It's what we gave you in the NFL. Because you you represent us. You wear that shield. You give that money back 
everything and you're obligated, you sign that contract. So if a girl is getting on your nerves, whatever, it gives you that much more incentives to say, just well, walk away, I, walk away. Don't do I, I don't know if he was indicted for that or anything to that effect. Because remember, only a $5,000 bond to get out of jail. Pretty low for something like that. Um, Unfortunately, so guys have done way worse, too. I mean, Michael Vick's one of the most famous yeah. cases. Uh, I'm just saying, been, Tyreek Hill breaking yeah, his kid's arm. If they, only, if they gave him a suspension already, they must have investigated it and not to be as... I think they did four or five games, and then he came back for the playoffs, and they, were, they lost to Kansas that, City. That'll do it. I mean... Yeah, Ray but Rice, they, 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 Dan, think about this. If you're like a player like Von Miller... That's on a big, enormous contract. Teams are going to give him a chance because of that contract. They don't want to take on that dead money because of domestic. Like case in point, Stefan Diggs, while he was a headache, they would take on, they would get rid of that and take on the dead money for that instead of taking the dead money on for Von Miller right. and a more disturbing case. But that's I'd rather keep, I'd rather keep the headache of Stefan Diggs and get rid of Von Miller. But that's what I'm saying. There has to be certain stipulations within a contract. If you if you're found guilty, 100 percent, then it's absolved. Like the team does not get to pay you. You're not in cap hell or whatever the case yeah. is. It's a done deal. You are done. Like there has to be some sort of repercussions for that. Like all right, you know what? Kind of like Mike Vick when when he uh, he signed that huge contract with the Falcons. He did that entire thing with with the dogs. That's it. You're done. Rice, it's over. Ray Rice and that 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 guy is. A but fan. I don't know if he was uh, on I, his rookie contract at the time, Ray Rice, or was he just signed his extension to where they could have gotten out of it? He did the extension. Yeah. He, he got paid big, big much, big much. And he was on video. Well, the the Ravens were not going to release him. I think they put him like on paid leave, and then the video came out like two days later. And once the video came out. They cut him. They had they released him like you instantly. Do. Nothing you but, can do at that point. You know, I remember that vividly. I remember this is how sick people are. You know what I mean? I remember when he got released, there were Jets fans wanting to sign him. I'm like, what are you what are you doing? Like, don't you know the severity of this? And you want to sign yeah. this? I, I remember that, Dan. And and you know, while he was a good running back, the only the reason why Jets fans wanted him, and oh, I'm man. not saying we're part of that. Come on, you're all right. Jets fans, you're, you're lagging. He went to oh. Rucker kid from around the tri-state area from a college, whether it's Rutgers, Seton Hall. You know, they want that. You know, right? All right. No, I remember him at at Rutgers. He he's a sensational running back, but you don't do things like that. I you couldn't you couldn't touch him. No, nobody touched I, him. A bottom line is they've lost a lot of players to free agency. They've lost their number one wide receiver. They lost Gabe Davis, uh, Boyer, Boyer, uh, Floyd, Floyd. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They lost. The, they're not they're not as good as last year. That's for sure. But Afram, you know, as it as us Jet fans. This is where we see blood in the water. You have to. Th this is where we have to put the stigma of the same old Jets behind us and have that opportunity. Forget about a split. Th this, they're wounded. We have more over them. I, I get it on paper. We've beaten them with less, too. We've beaten yeah. them with Zach, Zach Wilson, Wilson owns them. Yeah. I mean, you got to cut their head off. Them and the, and the Pats. That should be four games. Yeah. Four games in the bank. And then with Miami, you know it better than I do. That That's the rivalry. I could see them splitting. I could see them. I don't yeah. think either team is going to sweep, sweep either or. I think it's going to be a, a split. And I think we're going to see them in the AFC Divisional game. They have to figure out how to um, – because they, they get rid of the – they had two of getting rid of the ball fast the la those last two games. So they didn't have a chance to get at him. So they might have to figure to drop back a little bit and force him to make a good throw. 
like they used to do with Brady. Like this, remember? Miami's lost a lot of players as well. They lost. They cut Xavier and Howard. They had yeah. to restructure um, Ramsey's deal to get some cap space. Or else he'd right. be out of there too. They lost big boy Wilkinson to free agency to the Raiders. They lost a lot of players on defense. Like, they got to pay Tua. I, they got to pay Tua. They got to pay him. And, and once they pay him, I think Tyreek is out as well. Now Tyreek's up there in age, but I think within the next two years, I think you're going to see the end of Tyreek Hill in Miami. Yeah, and Waddle always gets hurt. So. Tyreek and they have to make a decision on Waddle if they're going to pay him. Make no mistake, Tyreek is going to be back in a Kansas City uniform within the next two years. You could just see it. You could see that he's going to go back there. You know what I mean? It, it just it, it seems like these players leave Kansas City and then they go back there. It, they have it just too good with Mahomes. It, who wouldn't want to go back, right? That's why you got to take the head out of that team too. You have to. I've always said it. I'd say take the 15 and knock his ass right out. All right. Everyone mm -hmm. smiles and laughs about that, but let me tell you but something. No, you're, you're right, Ephraim. You they, take the 15 they, they, and you give him a concussion. I know it sounds bad, but guess what? No. All oh, right. my God. So good Friday's done with. Easter's in the rearview mirror, and this guy's out there chopping heads in the gala. I, I, I love this new app. I've always said that, right, Armand? <laughs> yeah. Take the I've 15. Seen. Take the okay. 15. Any quarterback, yeah. Burrow, Allen. I don't care who it is. I, I, you know, because right. this is what the but this is what the NFL has done. Yep. They have said our league is based on the quarterback. Yep. You take the quarterback out, Pop there's right a fighting out. chance for you to win the game. The Jets take their own heads off. That's it. <laughs> Yo, you know what? I want to give big ups to Liam. Liam got Mike West off, and he just grand slam. He took over the entire broadcast, dude. Big ups, bro. Appreciate amazing. it. Amazing. Out of this world, dude. Thanks for asking my question, Liam. I appreciate it. I had it written down too, but I'm oh. you definitely reminded me of it. <laughs> was I, think that, I think it the kickoff is gonna be fun. Yeah, I, I don't know what was going on with the echo. I think it might have been on his end. Yeah, that's causing an echo. Now I, I had an answer. I don't know, Dan, if you saw it in the comments about no. like the ball. So I think from what I've read and even heard from experts, I'll say. Whoa. The ball has to hit the landing zone. Oh. Caught by the, if it doesn't hit the landing zone, it's, it's a dead. dead ball, and the receiving team has it at the thirty-five. Oh, that's that's that's, that, that's big. That's what I think the rules from what I've read and heard. It's not like I know one hundred percent confirmation. I think that's the. But the ball has to hit the landing zone. If it hits the landing zone and rolls into the end zone, it goes to the 30. This is where I would have loved to have Ben Graham as the punter. Remember the way how he used to kick? It wasn't end over end. It was the other way. And a lot of ret returners had big-time trouble fair catching that ball because they're, they're used to that ball going towards them and cradling it, but it was going the other way. And there were so many fumbles and muff punts. Didn't we have the punter at one time kicking it, but he kicked it high and there was not enough time to basically had to down it at the fair catch it even on the kickoff? It, it was Aguiar. Him. Was it Aguiar? Oh, it was Louis Aguiar. Yeah. Louis Aguiar. In the, in they the used early to punt, 90s. Not punt it, but he was able to kick it high yeah. enough that. Like a sky kick. And then right. all, you, all you could do was basically uh, call a fair catch and. That's a, there was no return, and there's nothing you can do. And you just you take it where right it was. Yeah, the guys were there already. That's why I wanted Cordell Patterson. Because yeah. he would have been the best vet back to back up Brees, another pass catcher out of the backfield. And him and Gibson on the kickoffs or even punt returns yep. would have been exciting. He what did he sign for? for? I think he got a two year deal, with six who? million. But who? Three years, three million. Who do you sign with? Let me look it up. I think he, is he with the Steelers? Yes, the Steelers. It is the Steelers, Steelers right? Man. They're going to be sneaky good. I, I don't think they're going to be great because I still do feel like Russell Wilson is on the decline. But I, I think they're going to be. Yes, it's the Steelers. Good. Yeah, it's the Steelers. That head coach is a beast, man. Yeah, you, you, Tomlin. Yeah, 
what what a great head coach he is. Like the Steelers are just class act organization. They know exactly what they're doing. What an amazing organization. Like, uh, I mean, uh, jury's out right now on us. Like with our coaching staff, you know, this is, I'm expecting a lot from Sala, you know, uh, circling this back. It, I just feel that he's going to be different this year. I, I no just choice. I, he, has, he has no choice. He has no choice. Exactly. And I'm not comparing him to Parcells at all. I'm not. But I, being a, an NFL historian and Afrim, right when Parcells was in his third and final year or second, I think it was his third year with the Giants, he said, you know what? F everything. I'm going to do things my way. And he did it. He didn't care if players didn't like him or whatever the case is. He became Bill Parcells. I feel like Sal is in, in that place where he's not going to give that much room to the players. That's why I think players like Will McDonald, who Coach Westhoff was very high on. I, that that caught me off guard, Liam. Like That really caught me off guard. I was like, He's like, yeah, you know, that, that young edge rusher, meaning that he saw. Maybe it's about J.J. I no, he said rookie. He said rookie. rookie. He, yeah. you know, that, you know, he he knows, man. He's he probably saw something in him last year when when we played out. Our I'm sure they Denver. scouted him also. Yeah, you never yeah. know. I think he's gonna be he's gonna be a wild one, man. Will McDonald, everybody's sleeping on there. A lot of people are thinking, oh, you know, we got Reddick, who we didn't even touch on tonight. What? Oh, because they're they're dissatisfied with with Will McDonald. I don't think so. The yeah. defense, how we have it, it's it's always rotating. So yeah. you need that. You have someone like McDonald who is lanky, strong, leap over cars, and call him Superman, right? Tremendous bend. Tremendous. Tremendous bend. If he gets bend. it, if he gets it, I'm looking at maybe seven sacks this year. Yeah. Minimum. I hope so. I, I feel like the, the main reason that they brought Reddick in not saying that they don't trust Will McDonald, but they did realize that there was a big hole once Huff left, and they need McDonald to prove it, but they don't want to put the pressure on him that he they has also, to be that guy. They also lost Lawson. Lawson. Yeah. Right? Oh, so did they? Yeah, he's a free agent. Oh, Lawson he, he is not on the team. Thank I didn't God. know that. Yeah, yeah, he's a free probably. agent. Thank he God. was one of the cuts to – And Hassan Reddick plays three downs. Yep. Yes. Huge okay, the, the, the only thing I want to give credit to Luca here because he brought this up in a group chat I'm him with it is Reddick has never played in a 4 3 defensive system, and so he's never been on the defensive line, you know, with his hand in the dirt. He's been more of a 3 4 outside linebacking pass rusher. So I think Reddick, you know, let's see how he does on the line, but I think they're going to use him like the hell they use Jermaine. Like you've seen Jermaine stand up as a yep. rusher. But yeah. also see Reddick. And I think Reddick is gonna mentor not just McDonald, because I think they're sense. similar in speed type of right. edge rushers with the bend and everything, but he's also gonna help Jermaine because right. he could help Jermaine as the standing rusher from the outside linebacking position. Also, I think with this a defensive line, he's gonna have more chances than he did with the Philly. with the Eagles to get ever. at the quarterback. I think ever. Ever in his career, because he was with Arizona, then he was with um, was it the Titans? One one year it was one outlier team that he played for a year. Then he went to the Eagles, and to your point, Afram, I think that's a hundred percent. Imagine with his skill set, he got what eleven sacks last year yeah. <laughs> with it, playing okay. alongside Quinn and Williams, and, and JF. He's now rotate, he's going to rotate, so he's going to be more refreshed than he he's. With the other teams. Reddick went to one year with Carolina, 2021. Carolina. That's it. Now, there's a lot of rumors with JFM being the yeah. odd man out. How are you guys feeling with that? I am I'm okay with it. I believe I'm it when okay. I see it. I don't feel that he's lived up to his contract, but I don't want to uh, if he could restructure great, I don't want to yep. see I don't want to leave I don't want to lose him now. I think I, wanna, I think I the Jets defense him. is better with him on it. Oh, I, I believe his contract's gonna get restructured. restructured. It's gonna have they only to. got two million, and they need they need about nine for the draft. I have to apologize to Dan. Oh shoot! For what some happened? bad information that I got that I gave you. What? 
guess. About Quinnen's restructure. Oh, okay. Yes. Let's let's do this because when I heard this from you, I went on other podcasts and I'm like, you know, I got some insight <laughs> from my show. And, you know, you can't restructure Quinn and Williams deal until one year comes to fruition when you signed them in the first That's, place. I got I got I got corrected by Alex Lucas brother on their call in show because Dexter Lawrence the Giants defensive tackle restructured his deal. And I said, well, when did he sign his? Cause I brought it up and like Dexter got his contract in May and he restructured for this season, I guess a few, a few weeks ago or a few months ago. So I don't know why they haven't touched Quinnen's contract. Maybe it's not a, maybe the restructure with Quinnen's contract is not that great, right? but it's not a year. So I'm coming here. I was wrong. Dan, I'm sorry. I gave you so, bad information, which I found myself. I, I'm just glad that you're not the host of the Maury Povich show. <laughs> because to say you are not the father, uh, maybe. I got some We're bad information. That turns out. <laughs> it turns I, out. I, I just don't think he's. It, he needs to restructure anything right now. You know, he can restructure. He's got a, a times... Uh, <laughs> A, t- a time period to have to be under a certain number. So yes. there's no rush to restructure. I'm sure he has everything yeah. on plan. I'm going to throw a bomb here. I think he is going to restructure, and it's for Justin Simmons. Okay. You get that safety here. Uh, I I don't oh think they're going to bring in the safety. I don't think they so don't, either. They, 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 don't, think so. they don't prioritize the safety position. They better start nope. prioritizing. They don't. It's not the system. This is the system that they yeah, they're going to go it's with. All, it's the, all de, yeah, defensive it, it, line. It's all, all the front seven. I think if they were going to bring in, and I've brought this up, I'm going to – I think they might bring in another linebacker, and the linebacker I'm going to bring up is 25 years old, so you're still sticking with youth, but we've never had this type of player before with Ulbrich, Isaiah Simmons. He could play inside linebacker, outside linebacker. Was he the, on the Giants? He got traded to the Giants last year, yes. Yeah. He's, he's a free agent. Agent. He's a free agent? What about Quan yeah. Alexander? He's I'm a free in. agent again. I'm in. I, I think older. they want to stick with youth at the linebacking position. Yeah, Quan's oh, another year God. older. I don't think he had a decent year. But, yeah, no, Isaiah, Isaiah. Isaiah is good. He's quick. Yeah. You got me with Isaiah Simmons. I, I'm all for that. I yeah, think more, I, more speed. Yeah, I think that sticking with uh, Tony Adams and Chuck Clark at, at, at the safeties. And from Davis too. I mean, he's not back yet, but no. he's still out there. I think he's they back. might. I think they might look at day three safeties. I have a funny feeling that he's not coming back. I I, I think it would have been done by now. Who Ashley? That? Yeah. No, he's coming back. No, I, I think, think they, it would have been done. Doing the, they're doing. I don't think they're doing they're anything now because right. of the cap space. Yeah. I, I think, think so. he's, they're letting him go out and and test the mark and see what they're getting and the, and what uh, they did I, with what's his name the punt returner that's on Miami now. Oh, Barrios. Oh, Barrios. Mm. Barrios. They told Running him to go Barrios. out and see what happens, and then they still brought him up. I'm I'm yeah. all for Ash and Davis. I, you know, Lee I and I, we were talking about this, right, earlier yep. today. Yep. These are our homegrown players. Ashton Davis is finally growing into his own. To me, you can sign him up for a one-year deal. I would love to, to have him in. Two uh, year. I'd like a two-year deal, personally. Me too. Yeah, uh, but, there's a, but, but I think seeing free agency now and seeing the players that are out there, like Aston Davis is telling you what the now granted it's draft season, so everybody's saving their cap space unless right. there's a really, really bargain price that somebody's saying, you know what? I'd rather take the bargain price now and just, you know. It's it's wait and see season right now. Yeah. Like, I, I I think some of these guys might sign after the draft. Yeah. You know. Now, is there anybody else on the Jets that you guys would like to see restructure? DJ or is it DJ Reed has to restructure something? Like that? DJ Reed could well he he would be an extension because I think yeah. after this year he's a free agent. Uh, you gotta extend him, man. You got it. See, my him. only thing with oh, that is like you, you're gonna have to pay sauce. You have DJ Reed, you have Michael Carter. That's about fifty million in just a safety position. I could really I I, I don't want to see it, but I could see DJ Reed being the odd guy out. I don't think the Jets have any plan to get rid of Sauce. I just no. feel like what, uh, if Sauce could really elevate his game, then they can kind of get a lesser 
uh, corner to replace. I think, I think what they're going to do is I think Michael Carter's out because if you look at the slot corners got paid this year around 30 plus million dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. I think Michael Carter's in his last year with us. I think you could see the Jets day three. Hi, Elmo. Hi, Elmo. I think well, day look three. Look to join us. Finally. Thanks. Yeah. I think you could see the Jets day three. Maybe with even one of the fourth round picks, take a slot corner to develop them this year. Yeah, I, I would hate to see Michael Carter go honestly, but yeah, you, you might you be gonna, honest. I, 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 I mean, they they also got Brandon Nichols. Like maybe Brandon Nichols takes over for Michael Carter Bryce in Ball? the slot. No, Did Bryce Hall's free agent. He, he signed someplace else. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, signed. Yeah. I forget but where he signed, but he didn't signed. Eccles and Carter come in at the, in the same draft class. Yes, yes, different they did. different uh, rounds though. Different rounds. Uh, yeah. Honestly, Eccles I mean, came have, in later. But you know who they also have? They have the young kid from LSU, Jenrick Bernard Curvis. He could be the guy that they're developing to take the slot. Right, they like him. Michael they Carter. like him a lot. He I mean, he could year. be the next slot corner next year, unless they like him. Converse. Unless he develops That's to play the outside, Converse. he could take DJ Reed's spot. So I think we're looking at maybe one to two corners, day three, maybe undrafted rookies. I mean, I mean, if the Jets really wanted to go all in, I think Xavier and Howard, who was cut by the Dolphins, hasn't signed anywhere. Maybe they, you know. Make him a slot corner. That, well, I mean. I, I, I think if you want to do something a little bit froggy, I know Dan brought up uh, signing a safety, but talk to Xavier and Howard, moving him to safety. Hope the baby's all right, Elmo. But Liam brought Even up if you give point. him a two-year deal. But, Liam, you, you said that DJ Reed might be the odd man out. Now, you're you're saying that next year or this year that he might be a trade bait type of player? I, I think next year. I, I think we're going to I think we're going to get this year with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, like, I, I just – I don't know if they're going to give up. I think it's about $50 million, like, once Sauce gets paid. And there's no way in hell that they're moving on from Sauce. I mean, like no. – he is – he's loved by the NFL, and, like, the Jets have him, and, you know, he's bringing attention to the Jets. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be DJ Reed, especially if you want to go younger and extend uh, Michael Carter. I think that would probably be the way to go. And then you have, like, a lesser – maybe not even a lesser player, but just a cheaper, younger player to replace, D, uh, replace DJ Reed. That's Dark just Soul my opinion. Dark Soul just says, I haven't seen Salah smile since the end of the season. Hey, you know what? I have news for you. Us Jet fans, we haven't smiled since 2000. Ten. So I have the list of cornerbacks that I, are I smirked right in 2015. Now. I did smirk in 2015. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have the but list according to spot rack of available team. corners. Okay. Um, Xavier Howard, JC Jackson, Adoree Jackson, uh, Cam Sutton, but nobody's going to touch him because of his domestic violence situation. Yep. Another dummy. Uh, Stefan Gilmore. But you, he's he's up there in age. He might have to move to he's safety. Cooked. He's cooked. He's cooked. Avante Maddox, Patrick Peterson, probably another guy that has to move to safety. Maddox, Steven Nielsen, uh, Levi Wallace, Throws Rocky Sin, Keon Crossing, Kawan Williams, Trey Herndon, Eli Apple. He stinks. We don't want yeah. him, dude. With all those names that you're summoning, my freaking furniture started moving. <laughs> Uh, Antonio Hamilton, Justin Bethel, Fabian Moreau, Chandon Sullivan, Trey Flowers, Daryl oh, Worley. Like flowers. But we're talking about now. Like I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch anything just, just as yet, right? Like everything. I think, I, th I think nobody's touching I'm anything now until after the draft. Yeah, I, I don't hit think the so. Subscribe button. Hit the yeah, subscribe button subscribe. before you leave. I think he. I think I'm pretty sure he's hit it again. He's been well, hit it twice. So just in case, tell a friend. Tell a friend. No, don't hit it twice because if you hit it once and then you hit it again, he unsubscribes. Oh, oh don't do oh, that. Yeah. Um, don't hit it. If, don't if, hit if, it. If, if you're subscribed, don't don't do anything. Just tell somebody. Right. Yeah. Un Unreverse what I said. <laughs> Unreverse. Wouldn't that still be reverse? Probably. I, every That's time you hit it, it goes double negative. Yeah. It's a double negative. Hit it. I mean, look at the God, wide receiver. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's been here a long time. That yeah, don't so worry. So that's Darcy. why. So if you hit it twice, you're back on as a subscriber. Yes. Well done. If you were subscribed, Stark, I was defending. I said you. that you. I'm, I said I'm pretty you. sure you're subbed because you've been coming on for a long time. <laughs> he used to get. He would always take uh, Italy jet side and come at me. Ah. Yeah, but it's all good. It's all good. He's. We're still friends. 
I love so, it. Dan, when are we supposed to do this mock draft? We got to do this soon. Um, Akram, so, will you be joining us? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me know. Um, I would think probably next week, right? Next week we would yeah, have to. It's at getting least. there. We might be able to. You, we could do it every Thursday leading up to the draft. Thursday would be good, I think. Wednesday won't be good for me next Wednesday. I'm you telling date? you right now. Got a date again? Our next. Oh, what a stuff. Who were taken? Now, I, 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 there were some tweets about teams calling them uh, to move up to the 10th spot. Was that just? I, I could see that. I yeah. saw an art, I saw the article from ESPN saying the Jets prefer to move down, but if there's a quarterback there, well, if you're hoping that a quarterback's there, you're not trading out right now. You're trading down the the night of, and you're on the clock, and a quarterback is there. But I think like if the top four was right now, like McCarthy, Daniels, May, and Caleb are all gone, who nobody's trading up for Michael Penix. Like Minnesota might as well say, I'll stay at 11 and knowing that he's going to fall to us. Yep. Bo, Bo Nix is probably the only one that might fall late to the first, early sec, second round. He might be the Will Levis of his draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he could be. What, what are your thoughts on See, Levis? I, guess, uh, I, yeah. I like him. I, I'm good. I know everybody's clamoring for Brock Bowers, but I've been riding this train. I think the Titans, as much as they need O line help, I think the Titans are going to take him to get back to get Levis another weapon. Brock Bowers? Wow! They need another weapon there to play with Calvin Ridley. I've been seeing a lot of mocks that have uh, uh, Alt going there. I know because they need O line help. If they go for Bowers, that means Alt can drop to us by. I would, I would take that. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be... The only team that would worry me about taking Alt would be Chicago at nine. As much as they have two young tackles on their okay. board, I think for them to pay... But they, they don't even not, have a quarter. But yeah, but they have two, right? Don't they have... They have goal? one and nine. One and nine, yeah. One so is the Carolina fine. Pick. That would leave wide the, the, the wide receiver there available to us. But remember, they got Keenan Allen. They so do. they got Keenan two Allen. receivers. No, they, they don't have a quarterback. Be, so the quarterback, it's probably going to be Caleb going first overall. Yeah, yes. and then yeah, they'll probably get the, yeah. I mean, I could see it definitely being Walt or Fashanu or Fuago, one of one of them. You would have to trade up to eight with Atlanta. I think Atlanta's it. Like I know people are saying edge rusher for them. Now I know they've brought in two receivers this year, Rondell Moore. And, he's old though. Uh, no, he's young. He was the second round pick from the Cardinals. Oh, who am I? Th- I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> Anyway. But I think yeah, I know it's a new I know I know it's a new regime there, but I think Atlanta should use Rondell Moore, like how the old regime in Atlanta used Cordell mm-hmm. Patterson, okay. wide receiver, running back. I think they could be sneaky for a wide receiver at eight. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's to be Bowers considering they have Kyle Pitts. I could see Alt going to Arizona, man, because again, don't you? They have they have a left tackle, Paris Johnson. You could move him to right. They played him at right last year, and, and they're moving him to left. But Joe, and they're going right to take now. a wide receiver. Yeah, or they're tra- so? they're they're taking a wide receiver, or they're trading out of four because a quarterback is there, and Minnesota or the Giants want the quarterback. So now, it's a, but it's also what does Arizona want to do? Do they do they want to go from four to six, or do they want to go from four to eleven and twenty three? Hmm. Meaning, do they want? And remember, Arizona has two first round picks this year. They have four and 27. So they could easily say, do we go four to six and have six and 27? Or do we say, screw it, let's get the two additional first, 11, 23, and 27? And think about it. They could either load up on defense, they could get a they could get a tackle, they could get a right tackle at 11, they could get a couple of receivers to add. You know, a Keon Coleman later at 23, you know. I, I'm they could go you, corner, it, edge. In an all-in all year, man, where Joe Douglas is fighting for his job, Sala as well, that whole regime, I see the Jets trading up with the Titans because the Titans are Going rebuilding. To seven. to seven. I, oh. The Titans are rebuilding. They have a young quarterback. They, they have a new head coach. They need picks. They need more players. I see the Jets going to seven. Again, they may have to, you know, lose out a, 
on a lot of draft capital. Uh, They're going to probably, it's probably going to cost you 10, 72, right? One of the fourths, and maybe yep. next year's third. That's a right. lot for three spots. It is a lot. I but get it. But if but, you're trading up, they're trading up for Joe Walt at seven. Right. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You're not trading up for a Dunze. It depends on how high they have them on their board. To me, the only two players that you trade up for is Marvin Harrison Jr. and Joe Alt. I could, I could see I could see Harrison. If you're trading up for Williams. Harrison, you're trading up to four then, Dan. Yeah, or three. I could see. I mean. You're not trading up with New England. New England's no. not doing that. No, Kraft no, no. no. You, not you're not trading within the division. You're not going. Yeah, no. New England is going with a quarterback. That Those first uh, three, it's all yeah. quarterback. It's all quarterback. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm thinking like Caleb Williams, Drake May, and then. Uh, JJ. I think Jaden. I think Jaden Daniels is going two to Washington. Yeah. Okay. And then four. Yeah, th- yeah. Three is uh, New England. So yeah, they're, they're getting that. And then yeah, uh, four is Arizona. Whatever was vibrating, put that away. It's not the time. Come on, Armand. <laughs> it's not that. Sorry, that was my friend calling me on my phone. Okay. I had to just hang up on him, reject him. <laughs> Tell him to come on. Bring him onto the show. Yeah. They're not. They're not sports fans. Well, he's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> or trading down uh but like you know to afram's point is it, it's always legit um who would trade up and again to me it depends on who's left S- some of these quarterbacks i think they may drop man they uh, again jj mccarthy is one of those players where you're either high on him and you're great you're like you know what this is my quarterback of what he did with michigan or mm, no he might drop to 15. That's how I look at it. I look at it to the point where if he drops to 10, there it can't happen, Armand. It can happen yeah, that JJ yes. could drop to 10. If he drops to 10, and let's say Minnesota, Denver, or and Vegas, the Raiders. And the Raiders. That's 12, 13, 14. Three teams. Kings freaking ransom. You get the player you covet after that. Because let's say Odunze, Neighbors, uh, Fashano, and Fuaga are there. Four players, four highly touted players. This are... is what I think, Elmo. This is what I'm thinking, if anything. I think. Oh. You probably get a second round pick. Yeah, but Broncos yeah, don't have a second round pick. Who? The, Raiders, the Raiders do. And, and remember that the Vikings don't. The Vikings have they now don't? two first. They traded their second oh. to get twenty three from the Texans. That's right. That's right. And, and you're not going to get. You're not going to. Even if Minnesota had their second round pick, they're they're not giving you eleven and their second just to move up one spot. Right. Do you think uh, that they're comfortable with Sam Darnold for the year? They're they're uh, drafting a quarterback, Minnesota. You think so? I disagree, Armand. They would if they like JJ or whatever quarterback falls at ten. They would be willing to sacrifice their second in order to jump to ten because they don't have would... it though, Dan. I'm saying if they did, they know that the Jets so, aren't taking a quarterback too. Well, yeah, that's, that's the what... thing. Yes. So let, let let me say that again. So Minnesota may give up next year's second and then some more. So now you're dangling that carrot with with the Broncos and the Raiders. You're saying, look, I got two teams ahead of you right now, which in whichever order that you want. Whatever you want right here, you got to make this the sweetest deal for me to give 10 to you so you can get your fr- supposedly franchise quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. I think the Jets, that, that's one thing I'm going to be looking at from round I'd rather trade with the Raiders because I get a second-round pick this year. Yeah, You can get it this year. Of course, 100%. And one thing I would ask the Raiders for, now this is me, you might disagree. Now, as, I'm, I'm, as much as I'm for the Jets, day three, taking the quarterback – uh, I'm uh, asking for Aiden O'Connell in the deal. Oh, oh to wow. be our QB three. Oh, my man, my man. Yeah, Aiden baby. O'Connell, pick thirteen, and you're second. Psh. That's all I'm asking for. This guy, man. That ain't much. This That's guy. not much. To go, this to guy. go, to, to. We have a quarterback. We don't have to take a quarterback this year. You have three years left of Aiden O'Connell on his rookie deal. He had, but he's got to shave that mustache off. Because there's a reason why, you know, he can't go anywhere like 500 feet from any Victoria's Secret store. There's no way. You no. think there's a chance that Devontae gets thrown in instead of Aiden O'Connell, or do you think that's too much? No. No. Too much? That's, that's too how, much. How can we make it work? Wait, 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 wait. Liam brings up 
a very it, legitimate point. Hold on a second. Wait, wait. This is really good. This yeah. is some hot sauce here. No, it's it's a good it's a good it's a good idea suggestion. I just I think the Raiders, if they traded Devontae Sorry. when Devontae was one of the vocal leaders with Max Crosby. <laughs> No, hey, we're touching I'll, the send, the same I'll send them Alan Lazard so we could get that 10 million in June. Alan, yeah. And any trade includes Zach Wilson and Alan Lazard. Any trade. That might be it. But again, let's say we trade down with the Raiders. They give us 10. Hold on a second. Let's let's okay. let's look at this fully. We trade down with the Raiders. They have a second rounder, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now the Raiders, they don't want to be fleeced either. They could say, all right, you know what? We'll either give you a second rounder or Devontae Adams. Do you think that Joe Douglas is going to ask for both? I think he yeah, might he's going to gonna ask because I, that, he, he I does think he would fleet. rather take the pick. I think he'd rather take the pick than Devontae. I'd rather take Devontae. No. You get the known commodity. Yeah, you got to get Devontae. And then because the, the, the whole thing is, uh, Mike Williams might not be ready for week one. Like they're saying, he's not going to be ready for training camp. And if he's not ready, don't force him, don't rush him back. But can that, I, that, but if you're bringing in, well, you're obviously going to use Garrett and Devontae in the slot. I was going to say, Mike, well, Williams you, you, could, you could, you could, you could keep Garrett on the outside and, and put Devontae yeah. in the slot. I, yeah. I personally like Garrett Wilson better on the outside. I, I think he's just like nice, big body. I, I, I like him on the I just I just think they want to get him more targets and he's your number one. So they're gonna to try to get him to beat a lot more what's his you know, uh, to get to get him away from the number one and number two corners of teams. What's his cap hit, Armin? Who Devontae? Yeah. On a trade. Uh, uh let me go on over the cap.com right now. Give me one second, fellas. Well, uh, Elmo, it it depends. How badly the Raiders like the remaining. If JJ is at the top of their board, they're ready, full rebuild. They'd rather unload that contract with the Jets. Now you look at, okay, how do you fit them in? That's where Quinn and Williams comes into into play. That's where Aaron Rodgers did it once. He'll do it again, especially to get his boy here. And then you see all these other players. Okay, I have I mean, I, JFM. Go for it. I, I I have it on over the cap. So a trade for Devontae pre June first, twenty three million five hundred fifty thousand dead cap with one point eight million in cap savings for the Raiders. Post June first, if it's designated as post June first, seven point eight uh, eight hundred fifty thousand uh, dead money, but seventeen point five million cap savings. I don't, I don't. But think I think if the Raiders first, are trading I, up I for a quarterback, it, they're going to want Devontae. Yeah, I, I think. Like I, you'd yeah. have to, it'd have to be, you'd have to be sending them Lazard and doing it as a post June first designation, yeah. so both teams are getting the cap savings. Of course, I, th- I think it's the draft or nothing. I, I feel like if they don't get him at the draft, then he's not leaving because they do like him. Uh, it just has to be worth. I don't think. The, has I, to be I, worth I think while right staying in the Raiders. I do if too. they're getting a quarterback, mm. they want that quarterback to have a weapon like Devontae. Oh my God. I, I, I maybe I, I don't know. Everything is on the table. I, I think the, 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 here's a team you could trade down to and possibly get a court uh, get a wide receiver from Cincinnati. Just T. Trade Higgins in there yeah, first to go from he requested 10. a trade. You still got to pay T. Higgins. It, right. Time. I don't see a long term type of thing like with T. Higgins. I, I look at like an all-in year right now. And Devontae, what, he's going to cost you that much this year where you can fit him under the cap with all these restructures. And then how many more years does he have? What, another two more years? And you're going gonna... from 10 to 18. That's all you need, though, Dan. You, yep. just, need him, you just need him while Rodgers is here. The, the only Devontae, trade yeah. I would make with the Broncos is I get I get Sutton. In, in, in Lula, Sutton in 12 to 10. But they mm-hmm. but they also like uh, they also let Jerry Judy walk. So I, I don't see them letting them both go. I mean, they still want to be competitive. They, they, will, but they, they still need a quarterback. You still get them on a weapon for them. I think they're. They I, I think they're open. I think they're open to trading Sutton. It just has to be the right package. We, we should have asked Westoff. We had the opportunity. He ain't gonna tell you that he's on the <laughs> team. We were we were actually really close to asking now, him about. He's got a whole, good contract too. That's what I like about Sutton. Well, we were. You know, Liam 
you know, you know, uh, Liam got some balls, man. He almost did it. I had a kind of restraint. I kind of did. You did it? You asked Kind of. Kind of. How'd you do it? Man, I just kind of threw, lost threw it in there. I just kind of threw it in there. What'd you say? Uh, What'd you say? I said something along the lines of, obviously, there was like some bad blood over the summer. It got like a little personal. And he's like, yeah, I, I didn't really get into that. So I just left it at that. But yeah, I really wanted to ask him about it. He was bringing up this. Zach. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a different time. I also brought up Zach, and then he kind of he he kind of had a comment about Aaron Rodgers too. Said that he kind of annoyed him or something. He aggravates him. It doesn't yeah. sound like uh, Aaron Rodgers is a huge West off. I got to go back and rewatch. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what was said, but yeah, he's uh, he's not high on Aaron Rodgers personally. Now, everybody watching right now, thank you so much again. Um, again, we are at 548 subscribers. We just need two more to get two. to 550. So that would mean the world to us. Just hit that subscribe button. It would mean everything. So thank you again for watching tonight. We're going to go live tomorrow night as well. Uh, we're going to have a special guest on Saturday. Just um, We don't want to announce anything just as yet, but uh, this certain individual worked with Boomer Esiason on the mornings. Uh, then with Evan Roberts, so you could, uh, you know, put, you know, kind of like connect the dots, you know, um, you know, like what Pee Wee's Playhouse used to do. You know? So with that being said, just leaving it as is. So again, just hit that subscribe button. That would mean the world to us. We're just trying to expand here. Um, but now Westhoff brought up so many great points. And, you know, to me, it was the Pennington perspectives, how. I would love to get Pennington on the show. I'm going to I've try tried. my best to get I've him. I've tried. I'm going to do it, dude. I'm going to fly out to Tennessee and drag him by his ears. Very not hard to do. I They're will huge. grab him. I will grab him. I'll grab him. And just to ask him, like, what do you think? What do you think about this? Like, you were always known as just intermediate field. He did have his moments. He did have his bombs and whatnot. I mean, to Santana Moss against the San Diego Chargers and, and the Jericho AFC Cotri. Wildcard, Jericho Cotri. I've you know, tried to get him on too. Oh man, I I always love Pennington, man. He was he was always one of my favorite man. It I broke just, my heart when he went to Miami, though. That broke my heart. Oh, yeah, but that was all Woody. Woody wanted yeah. to win big now with Brett. Almost did too. Yeah. That really pissed me off. Mm-hmm. If his yeah, shoulder didn't get messed up, nature. Yeah, he, yeah, he just had the glass shoulder. Yeah, but that was on. Um, what was it? Not Tannenbaum. It was on. What was the other? Terry Bradway. That was Terry Bradway as well, man. Like we had a solid team in two thousand two, and then you just you let the the what the Commanders. I can't say the other name. Rate us like Chad Morton. I couldn't care less. Fine, whatever. He's replaceable. But Randy Thomas. You let him go, that freaking all pro, and then he, you let Austin Howard go to the to the Raiders. Like we had a solid, stellar offensive line, and then all of a sudden, Chad Pennington is just like just right there, like a lame duck. Yeah. What you, you got? Wayne, Pete Kendall, who played okay, but who else did we have? That, that's it. It was like a makeshift O line, and it sucked, man. You know, you know what you had. At the corner, that was a promising young quarterback, man. That's what sucked with the whole thing. What day? Alma has a good. What what day is is? I know it's sometime this month. Right. Do Do you guys know what day it is? It's probably going to be. I would assume the week before the, the week before the draft because I know last week, um, the NFL draft uh, hats were hats, released yep. and only. The Texans and the Jets were the only two teams that their hats were not released. So you cannot buy them because the Texans are getting new uniforms. Now, the Broncos are getting new uniforms, but because they, I don't think they're changing the logo. Like, I think they're sticking with the, the current logo, just getting new uniforms. Mm-hmm. I, so I, that's, I why so. They, that's why their hat is out now. But the yeah. Texans and the Jets are the only two teams whose draft hats were not released. I hope it's something cool. Just go something simple like this. I mean, like they don't have to go all crazy. Wait a minute. Oh, that's the logo saying. they're going with. I just yeah. don't. I'm too. I, I don't know. Like like how the like maybe there's going to be a green like stripe on the edge of it, like lining. I thought they came out the the, the draft hats for the Jets. No, no. There's like they, a black were, and white they, hat. Yeah, that's not it. They were leaked. 
on Fanatics, like to buy it, it was leaked. Not that it was like, but it wasn't released. Released. I hate the ones with the rope that goes like across like this that you could you see them in like all the lids. I I can't stand those. Not a fan. Not a, Not fan. a fan. Nope. Afrim, how come you don't wear hats? You ever wear hats? I've lost enough hair. I can't. I can't cover it anymore. <laughs> you could try. You could try, man. I mean, come on. What, what, or go like with a bandana. Look like Hulk Hogan or something. That's oh my it. god. That's you that's mean, the look. That's I'm it. Sure that's it. I See you that. with a, ba- a Hulkamania bandana next week on the show. That'd be great. <laughs> Afrom, just rip, just rip my t-shirt every time. Oh, yeah, do it now. <laughs> yeah, do, do it. Afromania. Afro, yeah. Afromania. Afromania. And I got All enough right. of that at home. I love that. Whoa. <laughs> That's great. Armin, are you a hat guy? I've never seen you with a hat either. I yes, I, 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 I've had to get rid of hats because I've had so many hats. Oh, you're like Luca. Luca uh, has like a freaking hat collection back there. And the yeah, top I, the always, I, always wait, I always wait to see what the draft hats look like. Because I always like to dr- get the draft hats. Last year's draft hats looked horrible. The, or horrendous. the last couple have. A lot of them. Zach's have. wasn't too bad, though, the 2021. Oh, that was the only good part of that draft. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what killed Zach? Do you guys remember when he was dr- when he was drafted, he was interviewed by Susie Colber, and he said, like, the worst thing that you could ever say. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I love this uh, this organization, this net, and I can't wait to win a Super Bowl. Oh, don't say those words. Don't say it. Just, st- I remember watching that. I'm like, oh, my God. My wife is like, yo, how old is he? Like 16? I'm like, it doesn't matter. His, his career is ruined. But all the players want to say that they want to win a Super Bowl. Say it in private. While you're doing something else. They could say, well, I want to start to win games and build something. Yeah, uh, they should still, like, there's there's something better to say. Yeah. I just think, like, the, the agents and whoever the, their team is, their family, their friends, they they say, look, say win a Super Bowl because you – to make yeah. yourself feel good to the fans. There's definitely exactly. a PR thing going on with that. Yeah, like, there's definitely, like, a script or something. It's, all, it's always PR. They always think they know what to say and just – I would have said to Zach, Zach, this is what you want to say. You want to start practicing and preparing and building something here and start to win games here and be the and hopefully be a leader and a foundational part of the team. Like there's yeah. better things to say yeah. than yeah. saying win a Super Bowl. You know what Zach is saying now, right? The same same yeah, words yeah, as yeah. Forrest Gump said after made doing that long run. I'm kind of tired. Oh, no, I know what he, I know what he's now. about to say. I know what he's about to say. I'm starting up an OnlyFans. Mm. He can start whatever he wants. He, he can himself. do whatever he wants. But what what are we getting in return? I mean, we're not getting anything. Like what? I think they should just cut him. I've said that from day one. I've said they're that gonna hold on to him until not until they good idea. until the yet. last resort. Even if they get something, That's I think he's going to be part of the trade package. If anyone wants to trade up, he he has to be part of it. Like, all right, well, the thing is, up? they know that the Jets are desperate if, if, if to get nobody's rid of him. Nobody's going to take him on if they're drafting a quarterback, Dan. Mm-hmm. And Carson if, Wentz just went to uh, to Kansas City. Kansas like, that, he doesn't have much of a market. That really pissed doesn't. me off so much, man. So the Chiefs, Super Bowl winners, are giving Carson Wentz a chance to be their backup. While we were extremely quarterback needy last year, and we <laughs> didn't – he called us. That's the crazy thing. He called us. He's like, um, I heard that you need a quarterback. And Flacco Words called us. Out. Yeah. Now, granted, I didn't want Flacco back here. I didn't either. Me. Dan, you remember my name for him, right? I can't say that now. <laughs> Can he? That was your that was your <laughs> owner, Woody, preventing that from happening. Yeah, Woody wanted the picks. No, he, no, he just didn't want to pay the extra money. Yeah. So what are you guys' thoughts on uh, Booker McFarland saying that the Jets have no chance to win the division? Did you see that? He's just – it's, it's, it's even clout. healthy. Clout. They have no chance of winning clout. the division. When did he say that, Afrom? Did he say this that morning? before the Diggs trade? This morning. So before the Diggs trade. They make a difference. He said he had, there's no chance. No kind chance. Make a difference. I've never seen that many wrinkles on a forehead in my entire life. So I would not even entertain what I don't out of his mouth. I don't know. I couldn't stand him on on Thursday. What is it? Thursday night or Monday? Oh, night? he was God, on Monday was night horrible. football. Yeah, he was on he Monday was night horrible. football because he works for ESPN. Yeah. Oh, he sucked. So, yeah, they I, definitely I, have a chance. 
Oh, a tremendous Damn. chance. <laughs> this this Diggs it's trade, it's this good. Diggs trade gave me real hope and pulled me in, thinking we can and we will win the division. I had to be smacked by reality from Luca in our group chat. I said, "Give me a reason. Smack some reality to me." And he told me Salah and Hackett. And I said, "Thank you." To just oh. bring me back down. But I do believe we have a better shot now with Diggs being out. All Hackett has to do is make coffee. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Just keep that offensive line intact. That's why, to me, again, to your point, Liam, I know you want an offensive lineman. I'm cool with it. I, I'm good. Give me an offensive lineman. If you trade up to get Alt or at 10, you get Fashanu. I am more than cool with it. Because, again, you need to keep – to make this work, we all know it. We saw what happens when you take – this catalytic converter out of the motor, it will not work correctly. It just will not. It won't. Rogers has to be upright the entire season. And the only way to do that is to get these these beasts, these, these hogs in the front, knowing what they're doing. That's why, to me, one of the, the biggest parts of this offensive line is at center. Like, Tittman, for me, he's got to take that enormous leap forward. But, that like, Nick not Mangold. just a little bit. But straight up Mawai Mangold leap to take over this. If you look at the offensive line, it's all veterans. They're all looking at him for the calls, how we're shifting. So that's why to me last year when they forced him at, in in action, even though we had no quarterback, I think it was enormous. I he loved it. I, 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 was, I was fighting for that because I didn't want to go into this offseason with him at starting center with zero snaps at center, zero experience. Yep. I, I have belief in him now with all those snaps without now Rogers, hopefully God willing stays healthy. Him getting rid of the ball quickly will help Tipman look better as oh well. No, no, whatever offense, if it is an offensive lineman, whatever one it is, do you see him starting week one, or are we going to no. let him? No. I think they're going to copy what the Steelers did with Broderick Jones. Mm -hmm. Back up. Maybe he get. Maybe he starts in the preseason to get most of his snaps. You know. But I do think they're going to go the Broderick Jones route with the Steelers. Back up. You know, maybe in case of an injury, right. he goes in. Maybe if there's bad play, you know, you could use him. On goal lines, you know, as an extra offensive lineman to, you know, get to punch the ball in with Brees or Izzy or the veteran running back or the other running back you bring in, whether it's a veteran or even if it's a, a young kid that's a rookie undrafted, you know, well, that makes of, the team. Which you could bring up a good point. Think of this. Think of this as depth, right? You have your starter starting five, and behind them you have that rookie, whoever it is, Fashano, Joe, Joe Alt. Ofuaga, one of those, one, Bakhtiari, two, and McGovern, three. So that gives you that depth. God forbid one of the starters go down. That to me is is elite. Let's me. get back, let's get Bakhtiari and and McGovern first before yes. we can make that uh, assessment. Uh I prefer my preference. My my preference is a swing tackle that can play both left and right. Bakhtiari mm. can't. And I think you're taking on a bigger risk with him and Tyron oh, Smith both being injury prone. So, like, some – let's see. Hold on. I'm looking up some tackles. So, you got Riley Reef still out there. You got Chris Hubbard, Cameron oh, yeah. Irving. Hmm. He's – like, uh, that's the right tackles I'm looking on over the cap.com. Uh, left tackles, uh, Cameron Fleming, uh, Jerron uh, Christensen. He's like 27 years old, so he's still a veteran, but he probably could play both tackle positions. Roderick Johnson, Ethan Greenridge. You know, I want a swing tackle that could play both. Don't bring in a, another veteran offensive tackle that could only play one side. Because I, I think the. And I'm going to interject here. Yes, I, I like that. But if we don't have those options, let's not forget about Carter Warren. That guy played pretty good last year. They like him too. 
I like him a lot. Him and and the clot. I, I really like him. I, I like Max Mitchell. He is very good. He has a lot of potential going into his third year. I mean, he's complete. Right. He's I think they're going to make out Max, of the system. He got it. I out think of the they're going to. I think they're going to make Max Mitchell be the Swiss Army knife for the defensive line. He could play both tackle and guard because they did put him at guard at some point last year for a few snaps, I believe. What up, guard? I think he plays better guard than he did tackle. Right. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think he played guard for when AVT went down yeah. against Denver. Yeah, no, enormous. Now again, so he 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 might be the Swiss Army knife guy that could play guard and tackle. Carter Warren's probably, maybe they make him be a right tackle to learn from uh, so, uh, Morgan Moses. So this is the wild part. If you think, and I'm not thinking future now, right? Like this is an all in year, but if this thing works out. Right, and we get a left tackle at ten, whatever the case is. If you look two years from now, post Aaron Rodgers, you have a young quarterback coming in. You might have a very good offense, a young offensive line. Think of it: you got Tipman, AVT, Carter Warren might be coming into his own. Then fourth, you have Joe Alt, Fashanu, or Fuaga. Four. You need a you need someone what maybe at right guard whatever the case is. Well, you have That's... ADT at right guard. You may, maybe Max Mitchell takes over for John Simpson when Simpson's either cut in the future or his contract's up and he's not here. And Mitchell's our left guard. Yeah, it's coming together, folks. It's coming together. I mean, at f- in the fourth round, I'm looking at I'm looking at a quarterback. Uh, I know what I said before, like you know maybe Rogers might get upset this and that, but if you if you get a Spencer Rattler. The guy from what South Carolina? I like him a lot. He has a there's lot. A, there's of also Jordan Travis, who will be our QB FSU. three. Now he's coming off a very serious injury, but right. I look at it like this: Say QB it. three. Preach. He can take his time and recover. And if, even if you have to put him on the uh, IR, you can. Maybe you get another veteran quarterback that could be QB three. That's very very cheap in camp. That's just you. fighting. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to buy you chocolate because <laughs> you just made my night. If we can get Travis in here and have him recover fully, that could be one of the steals of the draft. There's also that, Joe Milton. Not a fan. Not a fan. I'm not, I'm not a fan of any quarterback in this draft for the no. draft. But next year's class is supposed to be much weaker. Like Very it's weak. supposed to be Shador Sanders and Quinn Ewers. And now, no granted, we could all eat our words because just look at 2017. To 2018, 2017, Trubisky, Watson, and Mahomes. Two of them are pro bowlers, obviously Mahomes and Watson. And then you have the 2018 class. Baker, Sam, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Josh Rosen. The 2017 class, while you have two of the five first-round quarterbacks be pro bowlers, that 2017 class is – Dude. What it's I better do, 2018 dude. class. What so I you don't do. know what these classes are. Listen. Right? Like this he, class could be as overrated as 2018, and next year's class, which is supposed to be weaker he, and not he, as talented, he, could come out to be better than this year's like 2017's was. Liam, you're gonna leave that one there because I, I, I love playing hypotheticals. So when would it be? It would be 2026. 2027? No. He might no stay there to make the money. Think about it. The nil kids will stay in oh. school if they're not going to be a first round or an early pick, and they can make round. more he's millions a, of dollars in, the, in in college than they would in the pros. He's a first round pick, bar none. I say he leaves. Is he the starting quarterback at Texas? He will be. You know he will be. <laughs> you know he will be. So can, can he we, has the transfer portal. Maybe he wants to transfer. May I? I'm going to play. I'm going to play a little game here. Remember that whole scenario I said with, with the offensive line, that young offensive line? If it all pans out, say the Jets win the Super Bowl this year, whatever the case is, Rodgers retires, 2025, a complete bomb of the year, of a year. 2026, we pick first overall, we get Man- Manning. We finally get a Manning. Yo. We we'll probably get the Whoa. worst one. <laughs> You know what? You know what? You negative Nelly. 
Oh no, maybe he's probably he, right. You're he, probably no, right. He'll follow in his uncle's footsteps, Peyton, and not and and stay in college. Yep. And get paid more, millions of dollars. Yeah, or or exactly. I mean, it, probably Matthias. Or or point. he follows in his other uncle's uh footsteps. Eli, I don't yeah. want to go to New York. Like he didn't want to go to San Diego. What a bitch. Well, he didn't want to come to New York. Peyton wanted to come to New York. But he Parcells did. didn't get didn't said to him, um, uh, you know. Oh, you're not guaranteeing him the the. Over- yeah, I'm not going to guarantee him the spot. Yeah, because Ryan Leaf almost went to Indianapolis. Hmm. Yeah, that was like that was the big rumor that Leaf was going to go number one overall. Why mm-hmm. would Why would Parcells say that? That that's because he's an idiot. He's an he idiot. Is. A <laughs> Hall of Fame Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame idiot. I guess he didn't want to be pressured into it. Don't tell me what to do type of uh, attitude. That I'll never forgive him. And what he did in 99, not putting Ray Lucas. He he was so stubborn with the whole Rick Meyer thing, which oh. I actually have Rick Meyer's jersey. Why? Why we wouldn't have had Vinny. We would have had a franchise quarter. We would have had. We would have never had Vinny. You never would have had Pennington. That's, uh, we that's probably fine. don't have the. Well, the year we had the three first round picks, we probably don't. We, we either have Abraham or Ellis, or we don't have neither. Can you imagine having Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in the same division? Which it happened. It happened what once before they, they realigned. Yes, I right. Think it happened. That, once. I think that's right with the Colts, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, whew. well, again, thank you for everyone watching right now. We're still going into the uh, the late night right now. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you can. We're at five forty nine subscribers, and just to hit One that five fifty. Wouldn't, it would mean the world to us. Again, we're going to have a lot of great guests coming on. Guests that um, it's exclusive here. You, you, you guys will see. I won't uh, be on for Saturday, though. Yeah, Liam can't make Sorry. it on Saturday. What, what's going on, dude? Uh, on. I, I won't be here either. I just want to tell to all my wrestling friends, Elmo, you included, happy WrestleMania week. Enjoy WrestleMania this weekend. By the way, our tribal chief better kick that fake fraud Cody's ass. Tribal was the ultimate warrior, Roman Reigns. Oh, what time is is it Saturday? Uh, it's seven o'clock both nights. They're going, (laughs) oh, the (laughs) The interview. Thanks a lot, Armand. (laughs) Thanks, thank you. Take a good, good, Armand. It's your show. What you know, what at at, at this point, you know, what here you go. I'm gonna assume it's eight o'clock at night. Uh, we'll see. Well, we'll, we'll see. You know, it, it depends on, um, the special guest who was with Boomer in the morning, who was with Evan in the afternoon and he's now bald. He's, he's working. He's bald. He's, uh, he's, a, he's great. He's handsome. He is handsome. And, uh, we'll see. We'll see how, uh, that, if, so, I, wait. If, I, if I was a gambling man, <laughs> if I, you think it, it might be that person. But don't. I was a gambling man. Yeah, I, I see where you're going with that one. You really don't want him on, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sorry. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Wild stories with him. It's out of this world how, how he would take right his show with uh, with Boomer. He would take the helicopter, man, like all the way to, to Atlantic City, bet, and then come all the way back. Wild, man. Out of this world. He, he get back into the city like 3 in the morning. Yep. Dude, uh, what is that? Is that ghost? Uh, it's the, it's the finger. It's the finger for for Roman Reigns. Oh, I don't know. What for the bloodline, <laughs> we the ones. Yeah, uh, Afrim and I. We the were real somewhere. ones. We the green ones here. Sorry, the green ones. Yeah, no, Afrim and I were in the dark room, still developing film. So we're, we have no idea what the hell you guys are talking. No, you're about. in the darkness retreat. No idea. Darkness retreat. I'm oh, I'm the one God. in the dark. Oh yeah yeah. <laughs> But I mean, getting back to the Jets, it's it's promising, and you see players on that defensive line that this could be lethal. It can be. I said it on the last show. Stack Exchange 2.0. You have again, Reddick could be your havoc guy, your, your Mark Gastineau, because he's fast off the edge. You got your Quinn and Williams, like your Joe Klecko. You know, he could play anywhere. He could be completely disruptive. Yeah, you know, you're like see more blitzing. Yeah, the prize like, blitzes. I, that's, I that's agree. What we need we need speed, and that's why I honestly think 
these safeties are still on the table, even though you guys might say, no, nah, you know, it's not kind of like that scheme. I completely see Simmons. Be, he's a ball hawk. That's one thing we don't have in the safety. He position. gets a lot of flags for a lot of hits, and he's got suspended twice last year. Well, that's because the NFL turned soft. I mean, honestly. <laughs> that's, unfortunately, that's the that's, rule. That's, you know, you got to adapt. That's why I, I don't think Simmons is in the cards. Now, maybe another safety that's out there, I'll look. Quandre there Diggs are safeties out is there. out there. Quandre Diggs. And then you have the other Buffalo safety. I forgot his name. Micah Hyde. Micah Hyde. Micah Hyde. Yeah, you got Micah Hyde, uh, J. Ron Curse, Tashawn Gibson. Now, he might be the safety they look at because he comes from the 49ers system, which is where a similar system. Great point, man. Uh, Kareem Jackson, Will Harris, Cody Davis, Terrell Edmonds, Justin Evans, Rudy Ford, Ryan Neal, DeAndre Houston Carson, Deron Harmon, uh, we're not bringing back Adrian Amos. Um, uh, Daryl Worley, who also played corner, played safety. Uh, Logan Bay. Ryan. Logan Ryan, who was a corner, moved to safety. He played in the 49ers system last year. Right. Uh, Dean Marlowe, John Johnson, Terrell Burgess, Elijah Riley. This is all according to Over the Cap and Tanner, Tanner Muse. I would have looked at Julian Blackman, but he went back to the Colts on a one-year deal. Okay. So there are options. That's why I don't think we're putting all of our cards on Chuck Clark, man. I guys coming off injury, I can't just pencil them in there and say, all right, this is it. The only other option that I would see is if the Jets trade down and acquire a second pick, we get Cam Kitchens, safety from the Miami Hurricanes, who guys, I, I don't know if you've ever watched them. I, I remember watching him last year, and then you see on the highlights – he is a complete ball hawk and a heavy hitter. So to me, it's it's one of those where you have Tony Adams and Cam Kitchens. You have a safe, you have a rookie there. Like you guys are saying, this defense is not about the safety work. But if you could draft someone like that, you have. Two I think young that's kids their preference. Like, I think that's their preference. Is I am very know. big on if, Cam Kitchens. Huge. If they trade down and they take an alignment with that first round pick. And get a second round pick. They're going a second round receiver. picks a wide receiver. I agree, Afrim. You think so? Oh, now the day no prob- maybe now now maybe if they love kitchens, let's say after they they trade down with Afrim saying they go wide receiver. Let's say they love kitchens, and let's say he's there at the end of the second round. Maybe they take pick seventy two and one of the fourths, trade up what? to the back end of the second round and take him. Wait, uh, um, okay. Let's say it's the back back end of the second, like about to be the start of the third. Yes. They take pick 72, which is a third rounder, and one of the fourths fourth. to get back into the late second. Let's say it's like one of the final three picks in the second round. If and they take happens, Kitchens. If that happens. Wow. But they would have to love Kitchens to do that. I think if he's there at 72, they might do it. I don't know if they're going to love him to trade up for it. But I'm, the possibility, if they were to trade down because they went offense with the first two picks, O-line and wide receiver. To Matthias's point, right, this defense will keep you in every game. It's up to the offense to win. It will – it's – they're interchangeable here. If Rodgers is healthy and he's upright, then it's up to the defense to win the game. Defense wins championships. Right? We all know that. No. The defense will be asked to do something incredible this year. And they've been working their asses off for the past two years for this opportunity to win you games, to to game change the entire facet of how this this revolves around our defensive psychos on the front four. That's what I, th- I see. I see that the Jets have everything at their disposal to becoming a championship caliber team. You got to keep Aaron Rodgers healthy. And if you do that, that's all the defense wants. Because the defense is finally going to have some time to just rest, relax, recover, get like revved up. Tell me for a fact, guys, not for nothing. When the defense is on the bench, they're getting their breather. 
and they're watching Aaron Rodgers do something that they have not seen a quarterback do while they're there, except for like when Mike White was there where there were sustainable drives. But now instead of just field goals, it's touchdowns. Think of it with the defense looking at, oh, shoot, we're up 17-3. We're up 14 nothing. We're up 27 14. Let's have at it, boys. Let's have some fun because now that offense is desperate. We got them right where we need them. And you saw spurts of it, right, against the Eagles, right? The Eagles came into our house undefeated. And that the defense just pinned their ears back. Boom. Right out of nowhere, Jalen Hurts was completely exposed through an interception right to Tony Adams. I think we're going to see a lot of that this year. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really excited to see them play with a lead. What is that? What is uh-huh. that? It's a four-letter word. With a, oh, we can't say those words here on this new podcast. Well, we can, but... <laughs> we can. We can. But I, I'm amped, man. I mean, yes, I fall into this same vortex, just like you guys do every year around this this time. But, right, this this is different. It's always different. It's always different. It's Biggest always different. season of all time. Oh my gosh, man! I just, I want a Super Bowl so bad, man. I, this fan base deserves this so badly. All of us, all the amazing podcasts that go on, you know, you see that passion, you know, all of them. Let's go. Uh, Was it? Let's talk Jets. Green Bean. You know, they all share what we share. We want to see. An AFC championship game here at MetLife, which I think it's going to happen. I think we're taking the East this year. We're taking it. It's not going to be the same old Jets. We go into, where's it going to be this year, the Super Bowl? Arizona? Arizona, yeah. Oh, man. That would be amazing. Wow, man. Imagine that. Are we flying down to Arizona? No, I'm not going nowhere. I was going to say, would you, would you, <laughs> Jets in the Super Bowl, would you guys want to be there live? I don't think I would. I, 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 would. I, I, those I, prices. I, I told my father, I told my parents, I said, look, the Jets make the Super Bowl. I'm giving, I'm taking my entire life savings and buying a ticket and I'm going. Really? You would go, huh? I think I'd want to watch it on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I'm gonna watch it on TV, I want to be with people like you guys, like no, my no, friends. Jet guys. afterburners party. Oh yeah. my god, that anything goes there. Four yeah. letter words. All the content alcohol, creators get together. Stripper poles. We'll call Joe back onto the show. Mm. Oh, that would be an amazing day. But it's we just can do it. We can I do think it. It's it's on the table. Anything is is possible here. I mean, again, extended. Thanks to everyone watching right now, 59 people and growing. Again, just if you can, just hit that subscribe button. We're so one close more. to hitting five. I, I, I just want to be spoiled by one of my New York teams I've root for. I, I've never seen nope. my team win a championship, except once. That's with Argentina when they won the World Cup, which I think it's fixed. I was spoiled by my hockey team. Yeah. Wow. The Rangers, I was too young. I didn't have cable, so I, I didn't even get to I didn't even get to enjoy that. I had I to I, I had to wait until what the ten o'clock news with John Rowland. There's a part of me that thinks that they could go far oh. this year. <laughs> the, 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 the New York exactly. Rangers are the San Francisco 49ers of the yep. NHL. You, you're, yeah. They they, they they have good teams year in and year out. Um <sighs> I, I called them the Dallas Cowboys, but technically they've gone farther than the Cowboys in the playoffs. Like yeah. when you lost to the Kings and the mm. so you are the San Francisco 49ers of the NHL. Good teams year in and year out. And the Penguins. You get Jets. to the Stanley Cup, but you lost. <laughs> the Ra- oh, I, you see, I knew. Here we go. Here's the haters. Here's the haters. Here's That's the right, haters. Elmo. You and me, we're the haters. Oh, get out of here, man. Rangers are gonna go far this year. Yeah, far to go play golf with the Penguins and the Islanders and the Devils. And the Jets. <laughs> and the Giants. Just think, we got an all-star golfer as our quarterback, too. He's good. I like him. He is. I saw Super Bowl three. It was like a dream. 
it's been sold. Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying, man. That these fantasies got to come to fruition, man, for all of us. Uh, it, it can't. It, I'm tired of seeing Kansas City, man. Kansas City, they've sucked for so many years. They've been like mediocre as well. They tried doing the same thing that we did back in the 90s, trading for Joe Montana, and then they made it. They they, they made it to the Super Bowl. They're the Super Bowl champs. What what? How many did they win? Three. It's late at night. I'm sorry. My 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 brain yes, is failing. They they only lost the one to uh, Tampa in 2020. Um, I have a question here. Where do you rank Mahomes top five? And I will give you my top five. Of all time or right now? Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. That's fair. All right. Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. Um, I'll put him third behind Brady and behind Montana. Oh, my God. I think I'd put him second behind Brady. What? Uh, What's your top five, Dan? Brady, Montana, Bradshaw, Troy Aikman, Mahomes. He's better than Aikman, Dan. No, no, yeah, no. He is. We're not talking about that. I, remember, he lost the Super Bowl. Aikman won all three of them. That's my whole thing. Like, when Brady surpassed Montana, when Brady won four, he still lost that one. I held that against Brady. I did. Until he won. The undefeated season? Who's cutting their nails? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> That, that hit me right in the eye. Like, I don't know how that ricocheted off of Armand, off of freaking Liam's nose, and right into my left eye. It's like a field goal. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's, if it it's counts, like, it counts. It, it's like a Larry Bird trick. I went ahead and from the three-point line, four minutes left, right there. Yeah, I, I heard it too, but I wasn't going to say anything. But I was like, yeah, oh, if I have to say something. <laughs> it was loud. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's allowed. That's fine. Anything else you... Uh, manicure? No, not yet. <laughs> no, I had a, I had a. Uh, Go for it. Say it. it Hangnail that I was trying to get at. That's what I, they call I get it, it these days. I get it. That's what they call it. Just bite them. This have it. No, I can't even fight. get to that. I do it. And if I pull them with the tweezer, uh, it start to inflame, and so I just try to clip it down as low as possible without cutting into the skin. I pull it out. My whole root. Never go your back. Top, your top five, Afrom. My top five, I'd have Montana one. Oh, He's wow. undefeated in the Super Bowls. I just the way he plays. He, wow. he can, really? I don't care for Brady, but I'll have to put him in two. Um, three? What do you got there? Three. It'd have to be Bradshaw. Okay. Four. Yeah. That's a toss-up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Toss it up. Put some freaking Italian dressing. Toss it all up. And what do you come up with? Who do you got at four? Am I at least in the ballpark? Aikman yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. It's either, Do I put uh, Aikman or do I put Mahomes? I'd probably keep them at the same. Because of the undefeated, right? Yeah. That I think that weighs volume. I think he was a very talented quarterback, too. I, I think I think for the success for how Mahomes has gone there since he became the starter and getting to those Super Bowls puts him above Aikman. No, you know why I say no because Aikman he's done could've... less with more to, for the Super Bowls outside yeah, of no. Tyreek and Kelsey. That's it. Just keep in mind, Aikman had to go against a very tough San Francisco 49er team, and had they beat them, because the only time that they lost against them, Steve Young won. Uh, his first Super Bowl against the Chargers, where he set, you know, a quarterback record of six touchdowns. Had Aikman gone into that Super Bowl against the Chargers, he probably would have had seven with the arsenal that he had. I mean, they were it was very, very similar because they had their running back to, you know, they had their Ricky Waters, um, you know. Dallas had their Emmett Smith, wide receivers, Michael Irvin, Jerry Rice. Then on the op opposite side, you had Alvin Harper. Then uh, they had John John Taylor. It was Jay Novacek, and then you had Brent Jones. Defenses were killers. I just felt different like rules that, then. And, they weren't protecting a quarterback yeah. as much as they do now. Dude, you knocked would, would it out. Would you of the throw park. Elway in the top five? No. No. 
Uh, he lost too many Super Bowls. He only wait, like yeah. he, he choked like, a lot. No, no. What about Eli? Eli or nah, Pete? I wouldn't put him in there. He, he won two. I'd say six or seven for Eli. You know, top, top 10. ten. Joe Willie. No, Joe. I, I want to say him just because of how important that Super Bowl was. Oh, yeah, that it was one of the. the that's where football didn't make a difference. They could <laughs> kill you. And, <laughs> that was like last boy. And that's the first time they used the term Super Bowl. Yeah. How do we? How do we find? How do we find See, that? I I don't want to. I don't want to waste it. Well, not waste. But I don't want to use a pick on a quarterback this year when it can be an asset for Rodgers, even if it's just depth. I want I want a depth wide receiver, depth offensive line, depth mm. tight end, whatever. I, I de- running back would be great, but I think they're. But if you trade center. down, Liam, you you could get that pick that helps with the depth and still take a quarterback day three. But is the day three quarterback really going to amount to anything? I mean, look at James Morgan. Aiden uh, O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, yeah, you can't draft with that. Brock Purdy. Yeah. You can't like like it or not. Brock but, Purdy, day three, last pick of the draft. But he's amount taking over the keys, or San Francisco would still be stuck with no quarterback, and they'd be stuck with Trey Lance. That's do do you trust one. Joe Douglas to draft a quarterback though? Well, late in the draft, I, I you know for, uh, late four fifth. I, that's to me. I would have no issue. But with it's that. not Joe Douglas. You, you, do you trust the coaching staff? No, no. But uh, yeah, but, but we're stuck Aaron with this coaching there. staff. Uh, I'll ask you a question. Do do you? I don't trust Hackett, but I we need a quarterback. If Rogers gets injured and it's done for the season, and he decides to retire, we really going to bank on Tyrod Taylor for all of next season and going into next year's QB class? That's supposedly, reportedly not that strong. They might want to trade up for a quarterback next year to Quinn Ewers or Shadur Sanders, and it's going to cost you much, much more. Yeah, it, it, I see what you're saying. Like, like there's there's an argument for like, it. Like this class is deep. Like this is one of the deepest draft classes: a wide receiver, offensive line, and even the quarterback position. How I look at it is like you know you pose a question: Do you trust the the coaches? No, but just having a young quarterback with talent back there being asked just to be redshirted and learning from the absolute one of the what top five, top six greatest quarterbacks of all time, that speaks volumes to me. Like if you have, I'm going to throw him out there again, Spencer Rattler, someone who had a rocky kind of tenure at college, right, uh, who got a second chance and, and knows what it is to make the most of it. He gets drafted by the Jets, third stringer behind Tyrod at this point. Soak it all in. Soak it all in. And then there's your, let's quarterback, say, comp- there's your quarterback competition for next year in case Rodgers retires, whether we win a Super Bowl or, you know, due to injury. He just says, I'm done. I can't. That's and here, here's my question to you, Liam. Okay. Would you rather them have draft a quarterback this year or still have Zach Wilson as QB3? Draft a we quarterback. can say we don't trust. We, like our poison is yes, we do, we don't have to trust the coaching staff to develop a quarterback, but on the other hand, we're either, we're stuck with Zach Wilson as QB three. I'd rather draft a rookie quarterback day three, you know, yeah. and have them be QB three than Zach Wilson. Would you grab QB3. a quarterback in the fourth round? That's day three, Afrim. Yeah, day that's three. what I'm saying. Oh, I would. Yes, yeah. I because I I want Zach Wilson off this godforsaken team. Let him He's sit and develop. He, that's He's what not we always be. should be doing is developing him. Not put him in, 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 in the fire right away. Yeah, Zach won't always be, on the be team. sitting behind a, a quarterback and developing. Zach won't be on the team. Uh, come on, guys. Like, like yeah. there's no way. Absolutely, there's no I mean the way Woody sounds, like, it's like he's you know dating his mother, like and they she has him like to keep Zach. Woody doesn't want to get rid of it and still pay his salary. That's what it is. That's okay. Woody wants at least get half of it back. Rogers has even publicly said that once he retires, he's not getting into coaching. Yeah, so he's got more um, opportunities, better opportunities. Yeah, be a golfer. But hold on, you know what? I got a clip here from Woody, and it, it's hit or miss with him of what he's saying. He's a moron. How about he that? One? Yeah, he, he he doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> no dipshit. But, Excuse okay. the language. That's the one person for Woody. I'm gonna. No, no, it's okay. Hold on a second. Let me 
let me play this here. And this was at the <laughs> freaking owner's meeting. Sorry, it almost slipped out uh, because he does that to me, and that's not cool. Um, all right, so share. You guys see it, right? Yeah. You guys see it? Yes. All right, let's uh, let's blast this. All right, yeah. Okay, this was Woody Johnson talking about Zach Wilson. Speaking of yeah. Zach, are you, are you optimistic that you guys can trade him this offseason? You know, Zach, you know, I feel badly about Zach in, in some ways because strike uh, one, you know, last year would have been a great, he would have been a first time he could just sit back and, and, and watch a master at work. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's never had that. He's been in the fire from day one. Strike two. And I think that's what he needs. He needs to, he needs to be in a place where he can, uh, he can observe for a while and uh, he's got the skill. He can Ball do one. There's a reason we drafted him at number two overall and uh i i have confidence that he'll get there foul ball point <laughs> can that happen here can that i mean you have tyrod you have aaron i think it's uh you know it's possible oh my god you know, if we don't trade him we're, we're gonna keep him so that's possible oh, oh, you're out of here like what are you doing and, and one again, question should be do you feel fortunate that that you're an idiot and inherited all that money from your family? <laughs> because you'd have no clue what you're talking about. What is he, he saying? Like, I why would you even talk? Like, you're you're hindering Joe Douglas to do what he does best, and that's wheeling and dealing, what a GM normally does. But he continues to say these boneheaded things. Like, even at the combine, he like. Don't talk about Zach Wilson or any of these players. Because I'm pretty sure had he said nothing, had he said absolutely nothing from the combine, even that Zach Wilson would have not been here. He would have been traded. What did he say at the combine, Liam? Remember what he said? He's, he said that the Jets didn't have a backup quarterback. No, that that was at the uh that was at the uh, the NFL honors he had said that. The awards ceremony. Yeah. How do you say that? How yeah, we, do you say we didn't we have, have a, a backup quarterback? So here's Zach Wilson, thir you know, 31 NFL teams. You want a backup? Because we consider not even having him as a backup, and he was here physically. Uh, we'd, we'd like a fourth. Yeah, you can't. You can't. It's, it's, but it's like Afram said, like when Woody said that, like, yeah, Woody, we didn't have a, we didn't have a backup last year because you didn't want to pay it. I just – it's, it's mind-blowing. Like – just I agree with it. that comment. He needs to stay out of the media, but he won't because he loves the media. He loves the attention. You know what? I'm going to throw something out here, and I would like for the chat to talk about this. And number one, for the 70 viewers that you're seeing right now, thank you so much. Again, it means so much to us. We're, we're new here. You know, it, it just means that much to us. And just to hit that subscribe button, it would just blow our minds to get to 550. We're at 549. Uh, I want to get back to Woody, let because he's a businessman, right? He's he, it's all business with him. Let's say he's doing all these moves, getting Rogers, finally letting Joe Douglas do his thing, checkbook to anyone, Ty, Tyron Smith, you know, Reddick. It doesn't matter. Just get him in here. What if the ultimate goal for this business first man is to win a Super Bowl? and sell this franchise at the highest peak. I don't see him giving it to any of his children. We all saw what his brother can do with this franchise. No way. I don't think his brother even wants it or no. wanted it from, from day one when he went to England. I feel that if the Jets win the Super Bowl, there's going to be a for sale sign, and he's going to sell it to the highest. Does the, Super Bowl, does the Super Bowl even raise the value of the team? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because I think they're valued at two billion dollars right now. It's gonna be more. They're, they're one of the. They're more. one of the highest valued teams just because of the market. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gary. That's, Vee, my, that's Gary my point. Vee, like man. in New York, being a high, he like I don't think a Super Bowl is gonna make it go to six billion dollars. I, I would love Gary Vee to buy the Jets, but uh, when when I spoke to him last year. Yeah. He doesn't have it. it. It's just way too much. Way. I know. Too I know somebody that has it. Steve Cohen. <laughs> You're damn Musk. right. But he. I think he was asked about that. Like I don't think he wants to get into any other sports. 
I would love Elon oh. Musk to be by the Jets. Like it would be like the oh, first God. NFL team to play on Mars. Oh Jesus! Yeah. The it would, would make like my, next. It, it yeah. would make my dream come true. I'm like thank God. Well, Hess, Steve Hess, Cohen and Gary V. That that would you you know what you bring up a good point. It would be. Cohen Tours. is worth now. Granted, Cohen could buy it by himself. He's worth twenty billion dollars. Imagine having that money. Imagine having that cash. See, that's it, fun, guys. This is the thing with Matthias. Like he, he is willing to spend money. He, he's not cheap. Yes. No. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. he he meddles in at bad timing. We right. needed a cool. We needed a quarterback last year when Rodgers went down. He said no to anybody. He said no to Wentz. He said. No to Flacco, even though I would have said no to Flacco. I would have said yes to Wentz. He okay. said, like, I'm. He makes stupid decisions at the wrong time. That's the bottom line. He makes these decisions. I don't want to pay any more at this point. You know? He I'll say this about Woody. I think he's the worst owner in New York. But he's but... not the worst owner in all sports. Yeah, He's no, top yeah. five. Remember that Afrim argument I tried to make with John on? I, You know who I know is the worst owner in sports. Who's that? John Fisher of the Oakland A's. He is a garbage owner. Wow, it almost came out. <laughs> yes. Almost, I would love and respect for Dan yeah, and this, you know, family friendly. John <laughs> Fisher is the worst owner in sports. I, you know what? As much as I dislike Woody, if you look at it, you know, he has tried his best. Like, let, let's rewind it all the way back, right? When he Favre. took over, even before then. Oh, yeah. J Parcell. Just, oh, no, that was that. Uh, well, he left. Parcells Parcells as, left because as, of him. Yes. He was VP and whatnot. But he went out and tried to rep. He loves replicating. He went out. He got Herman Edwards, Tampa 2. He tried getting what the Patriots had, got Mangini. Then he got Rex from the Ravens. He wanted to replicate that. And then what was he trying to replicate with, with Bowles, right? But he, he wanted to win. He did he did try to do what he but it just I think, I think the bowl, well. I think the Bowles thing for him was he's tried to replicate New England. He tried to replicate Baltimore. He's tried to do the replications like like the copy of like what a lot of teams would do. Mm -hmm. And he probably said. Let me go a different direction. Let me go a guy that I'm not like, let, let me make the Jets, even though I'm still going with an unknown, right? Because Herm was an unknown coach. Mangini was an unknown coach. Just what, where they came from was more like the replications, where Bowles was completely unknown, trying to make a whole new, like, their, its own thing. Well, let's see. Uh, fragment this one outside, then, right? in, even outside of Parcells, like they've never had that CEO type cat. Uh, you know, been there, done that successful head coach. Like we had talked about Bill Cowher coming here for years, when uh, you know during the whole Adam Gaze regime. Like we had talked about that. Uh, even McCarthy before he went to Dallas, he I would have taken him in 2019, 2018. I wouldn't have. I didn't want McCarthy or Gase. No, Gase, I would know. I I wanted yeah. McCarthy. I, he I always do, gets I the rookie the coach because he doesn't have to pay him that much. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's just like I, I want like a proven, been there, done there guy. Just I, that's I, me. I just think McCarthy had the opportunity. Overrated. And then Matt Rule too. I mean, at the time, like Matt Rule is the hot name. Eric Bieniemy was the hot name. But remember why we couldn't get Matt Rule because we because he wanted to hire his own staff. coaches. Yep, he wanted to hire his entire coaching staff, and the Jets didn't want to give that to him. That's Thank God we make that move. He it gets too stubborn guy. at weird things. It was Greg Williams. Yeah, the that's Jets funny. wanted to force Greg Williams. On, on I liked, guy. which I liked Greg Williams yeah. personally. Yes. And I like, I'll, I'll say this as much as they like Greg Williams, my question would have been you like Greg Williams so much, why not just make him the head coach? Yeah, I, I agree. He should have been the interim head coach to at least complete the tank in order to get Trevor Lawrence. Even though the jury's still out on him, I would have rather him instead of Zach Wilson. But let's, let's reel it back now with Woody. Let's kind of defragment this into four quarters, right? When he started, his first coach was what? Herman Edwards. Uh, after yep. Al Groh, right? After Al Groh, his real guy to start over was Herman Edwards. And to be honest, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't, you know, we were so used to in 
you know, in the nineties, just that losing culture until Parcells got there. And it was, it had its ebbs and flows. We were AFC East champions in 20, 2002. And we kind of saw the pattern, right? Like one year Pennington was going to be healthy. We're going to go far. The next year we knew it was an automatic somehow, some way he was going to get injured. And then the next year it would, it would be fine. So we had some winning cultures there. Now we go to Mangini first year playoffs. We were 10 and six. 10 and six. The second year we went what six and ten. The third his third year, we had Mangini. Mangini, we went nine and seven. He jettisoned him. Then we got Rex Ryan. Two AFC championship games with one head coach. When, when's the last time that we had a head coach that we went to the AFC championship twice? Afram, not even Weeb Eubank did that. No, and um what's um What's the, well, the head coach? Walt Michaels once, and then they, once. which was the, the most boneheaded thing that the Jets could have ever done, and fire him, which is stupid. Yeah. Well, that was because there was a uh, between him and Hess, there was a uh, um, disagreement in uh, in how the thing the team should be run. So right, so now after Rex, we move on to Todd Bowles, which a lot of Jet fans were divided. So was I. But that first year in 2015, we were stoked. We're like, all right, this is this is going well. I think he didn't do too good with the two. Well, they, with, they also had like, no talent around that time, though, either. They didn't do him any favors. Where with uh, Bulls? In like 2016. Look at, yeah, look, look at that roster. Oh, we had Brandon Marshall. Yeah, but he was that. on the decline bad in 20 from 2015 to 2016. His decline was huge. Who was the who was the GM? I think that was uh it was Tannenbaum, wasn't it? No, no, it was McCagden. Oh, McCagden, 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 yes, yes. Because he's the one that he brought in uh, Fitzpatrick and mm -hmm. that was Charlie Castle. If, if you remember, like yeah. like they were projected to go like two and fourteen that year with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and I mean it, it, that was a fun year. How far do you think? And I'm not a big Geno Smith fan, man. I have never been, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because he's balling out in Seattle. How 10 far years. after 10 years, but say he was healthy and his jaw wasn't cracked by one of his own teammates, which is hysterical to even say if he was our, our quarterback in 2015, how far Still would have sucked. He would have sucked. I, I agree. Armin. I, I think he was stuck. The best it, it took him to year. be a backup for seven years. Yeah, I agree. If Russ doesn't get hurt, he doesn't have that season. That, that's a good point. I, I think Fitzpatrick was the best option. Like, 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 like if Russ was healthy that season when Gino took over for Seattle. Right. If Russ – Gino doesn't get that two that that four-year technically, which is a two-year because they could get out of it after this season. He's a journeyman backup. Mm -hmm. He's a journeyman backup. That's what he is. It's yeah. the same thing like Daniel Jones. Like, I could see Daniel Jones, when he leaves the Giants after this season, be a backup for the next three seasons. He goes to a team that's loaded, and maybe he has a year like Geno to, to, to get another contract. We just we just were, you know, we had Mangini, who, who knew talent. He built up that team. And and Favre was his, uh, his stab in the back that it, uh, basically caused them to get fired. But then he, Rex he inherited. Didn't he didn't want to be here to begin with. Rex didn't want to. Rex inherited all those guys that that he he drafted, and then he had a solid team. He added a few more players, but and then Tannenbaum was basically following whatever uh, the head coach was doing because after after they lost some players, well Tannenbaum would trade half of the half of the draft to move up to get a player. And then he faded out, and then Rex couldn't Rex couldn't pick up, uh, couldn't draft anybody, and then he had to go. But and then get drafted defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those last couple of years, he had no talent though either. I mean, like we had like what Percy Harvin. <laughs> it's I, you know, wait. Let me see. This is two thousand. We just never kept someone. We never kept anyone for a period of time. He it couldn't was, develop anybody. It was all already proven guys that had come in. You know, Santonio Holmes, Braylon Edwards. Yeah. And Thomas Jones, LT. He never kept, he never kept a, a, a head coach for a long period of time or a GM together. Santonio you know, Holmes, that draft I, pick that we traded to the Steelers. Yeah. You know who that turned out to be? 
Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. Yeah, that's crazy. But, but we would have drafted Antonio Brown. I'm going to play devil's advocate here as much as I hate Geno Smith when he was a Jet. But before I go into that, look, all the 78 watchers, thank you so much for tuning in late night, Wednesday night. Uh, this is turning out to be like an insomniac episode, which we normally do Saturday nights. Uh, again, huge thank you. If you can, just hit that subscribe button. It just takes less than a second. Uh, I would definitely help out our algorithm. Now, with Geno's defense, right? Geno Smith. Look, look at the, even the laughs come out. It's, it's just the joke right itself. That's my son playing his. I love it. I love it. No, that's what Geno Smith does. It, it makes everyone laugh with the Jets. <laughs> I mean, broken jaw and all. Now, what did he have to deal with, right? He had, before the 2015 season, Greg Salas, ha uh, Hakeem Saleen, uh, Nelson at wide receiver. It was horrendous. But now, 2015, he had Brandon Marshall at his disposal, Chris Ivory, Eric Decker, who he was, you know, having a very good rapport with. A rookie in Nunoa. And, and yeah, Quincy Nunwa. I honestly think we would have made playoffs with Geno Smith. I, I have to because they, he brought that's in the year they brought in Fitzpatrick. I think they would have brought in Fitzpatrick to be the backup and to compete with Geno. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, they I, wanted but I think him Fitzpatrick would have. I think Fitzpatrick would have won the job from Geno. But he would have. I don't won. think he starts. I, I think they were going to give it to him. Uh, I honestly think I think they saw what they had in Geno, especially they were all hyped up with. The last game of the season that they had the year before uh, was it? Uh, but I think perfect, Fitzpatrick perfect would have game. beaten him out in preseason for the job. Yeah, the perfect passer game. Yeah, I think they would have given it to the younger guy. I honestly think so. I think possibly, but he would have been on a short leash. He would have, but I think his numbers would have been really good because think of it, he was going from mediocre wide receivers to dude all stars, like you know. Brandon Marshall had a career year in 2015, and what Record. he did for the Jets, oh, my goodness. It was out of so the So did Fitzpatrick. So did Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Yeah, he did. I, did, I, I just don't think Geno would have had the accuracy in the ball placement. Yeah. Like, he would have been, like, case in point, like Zach with, mm -hmm. you know, Garrett Wilson and the talent on the team. Like, Geno would have been that. He would have, like, he would have gotten Decker killed. Right. Like, I he, think, he like. the tight end, though, Cumberland, he wasn't terrible. No, nah, he was no, nah, he was a solid wide uh, tight end too. He was tight end one for us because we never brought in right. an actual tight end number one after Keller. Offensive line was still solid. They still had DeBrick Shaw, Mangold, Willie Colon, and then you had the other guys that you know left guard: it's Lawson, Winters, Ode Abushi, Brino Giacomini, the Brazilian. I used to, I remember I used to make Matt Slawson all the time. Like this, just the name. It's, I love Matt Slawson. I, I thought he was terrible. Stutter. Loved him. He was great. I enjoyed it. Um, well, you know, with that, I think we're going to be wrapping it up. And again, thank you so much for everyone watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Just we're trying to get to 550 subscribers. It just takes one more click and hit. Uh, and again, we're uh, we're going to come out live tomorrow night as well. Uh, definitely join us. We're going to have a. Uh, I don't think it's correct terms, right? Fans only. That's uh, no. No, only but, fans live only live q a live q call, yeah. call, call in it's a yes. fans call in show quality assurance Perfect. so definitely call in we would love to hear from you again before you log out just hit that subscribe button it means the world to us you're already watching please yeah. also hit the thumb the like button the thumbs up button if you like what you see yes and like Thank my old on. partner my old partner used to say Look, just hitting the subscribe button, it, it takes a shorter time than selecting a, a video from the hub. So just do what you got to do. Armand, just do it for Armand, you know, for his cause. You know what I mean? To get him better headphones, uh, you know, just 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 do it for him, you know? Yeah. Look at him. Look at him. Look, Dude, we're, Dan, we're, these are the headphones you gave me. I, I did. We're trying to raise enough money so we could fix his electrical work in the background there. It's a big fire hazard. Um, I'm an electrician. Um, I got you. <laughs> okay, so we're raising up enough funds so we could pay Liam to go to Jersey because Liam does not like New Jersey. He hates it. I don't. Like I, it. I don't like New Jersey either. The big <laughs> cesspool like Twitter. Wow. wow! Yikes! I like Twitter. No, Twitter sucks. X. I like only me and Afrim are the good things in New Jersey. And well, and food. Three things. That's it. Me, Afrim, and food. That's it. That's all. But anyway. 
Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it means a lot. Just hit that subscribe button, and we are out. So everybody say goodbye. Take care. Bye. Buenas noches.